Y'all ready for some affordable summer decor ideas? Keep watching. I'm Brandy, and this is Making It My Own DIYs. For the first flip, I have this cute little bird. This looks like a clock frame. I'm not sure exactly what it is. I have a little bird nest and some reindeer moss from Dollar Tree. I'm gonna take this little nest and it's almost made out of a really, really fine, like a vine or something, like twigs. So it's flexible and I'm just gonna kinda squish it down a little bit so it's more like an oval so that it will sit down in this clock frame. I'm going to put this little thrifted nest in the little thrifted clock frame and just use a little hot glue and press it to keep it down in place. I'm gonna let it cool and then to make it look rustic and cottagey, I am going to add some of this beautiful green reindeer moss. I do live in the country, as I mentioned, in southern Alabama. So we get a lot of this moss underneath our trees that grows kind of on the ground. And I think it's really pretty to add. It gives it a little extra texture, a pretty little element, maybe not so expected. And it's always nice to have something unique in your projects. So I'm just adding it here and there, just like it would grow under our trees until I get the coverage that I like. I like it like this. I don't want it to be completely covered. You can use little sticks or twigs, or you can use Spanish moss if you want to. And if this isn't your style, you don't have to put any of this on the outside of your nest. You could just leave it plain. I'm just gonna place my little bird in there. He's got metal feet that I tried to pull off. They won't come off but he fits nicely. Between his tail and his feet, he sticks down in that nest without needing any glue. So that means I'll be able to use him again. And I love being able to reuse my projects, break them down and use them again. So I'm gonna take some of these little ferny looking pieces of greenery that I have left. They're really just scraps. And I'm gonna add those around here and there over this metal frame. I'm using hot glue here. It's gonna work fine for this project, which will be indoors. But if you wanna put any of these projects maybe on your screen porch or outside, you wanna use an adhesive more like E6000 or the Fix-All glue um, or like, you know, something like that. Gorilla glue maybe in your hot gun, your hot glue gun, just to make sure nothing melts away. I'm just gonna to continue to embellish this a little bit over the metal and a little bit over the nest. Now, you might not be able to find a frame by itself while you're thrifting, but that is totally okay. You can pick any frame, um, any clock, and just take the insides out. Usually it just takes a couple of screws and then you can pull the whole inside out. What do you think about it so far? I could totally leave it like this. But for me, I love to keep adding beautiful little pieces of greenery and little pieces of flowers. And I'm not entirely sure what this would be called. I don't know if you call it a flower or not. They're just mossy looking things. These little tiny pieces of picks that I have. And there's no pattern. It's just kind of random. You just put it where you like it. You know how nature grows. You know, when you're taking a walk, you see all kinds of stuff. And it's placed exactly where God wanted it to be. So I'm going to place mine right where I want it to be. We like to make our pieces our own, right? Now, to make it a starry night, I'm going to just add this little strand. This is cork lights but you can use the little lights from Dollar Tree if you want to. I did thrift these lights believe it or not a whole package of them and I'm just going to thread them through the back and press them into the front of the frame and just use a couple of little dots of hot glue to hold it down. Look at it when the lights are off y'all it is so cute. I love this. This is really cute. It'd be so cute sitting in a window. All right number two I'm going to use some chalk paint a chippy brush I'm going to use some of these battery operated pillar candles and these happen to be the IKEA brand. Mine were thrifted. 
in this beautiful little thrifted, I don't know, floral candle holder. It's uh, not real silver. It's um, kind of black underneath. So I decided that I would go ahead and make this a little bit more of a cottage style. So I'm gonna add this with my chippy brush, lightly just kind of dry brushing it over the petals. I'm gonna try to get in between the petals and I'm going to get on top of the petals and inside the little cup part. So once I got the top part, I'm gonna flip it over and work on the back. You can use this technique with any type of a tarnished fake silver piece if you would like. I'm going to just take these little petals and pull them apart and just add the dimension back to this little piece. It was kind of crushed, probably in a box when somebody donated it and it got kind of mashed together. Okay, so now I'm gonna take these little pillar candles and I will remove the tags, by the way, y'all do take the tags off. You can use a little bit in the bottom like of a um, sticky tape or some putty or something like that to hold the candle still, but there's no real you know, risk of a fire hazard with these because they are fake. And I love that. Works perfect oh, in my house. Project three three and four because this is kind of a combo. I found this gorgeous washboard. I have had this thing for probably a year. It has some damage. The feet or the legs down there are not the same length. It looks like something has chewed away at it. Probably a squirrel in somebody's attic. I cleaned it up as good as I could, and now I'm just gonna measure so that these feet will sit flat on the floor. Gotta use the smallest or the shortest leg as a guide, and then I'm going to cut both of them down just with my miter box and saw. Gonna cut that on down, and then I'm gonna sand it off so there's no splinters and it looks nice and finished, and you never know that there was any damage on those legs. Same thing, both sides. Get it nice and smooth. Okay, so I love the patina on here. I love that rust on there and the wear down all over the wood, but I need to preserve that rust so that it doesn't flake all over the place and that I can clean it easily. I'm gonna just take some Mod Podge and another chippy brush here, and I am just going to coat this thing down. I'm gonna get all in between the ridges also in the little cracks against where the wood is and then because I was afraid that dust from the rust would smear a little bit I saved that rough part for last I'm gonna just use my little tool here my little heat tool and I'm going to dry this glue you can use a hair dryer you can set it in front of a fan if you want to do it quicker, or you can just put it aside while you work on other crafts. Once it is dry, or close to being dried, I'm gonna add a little bit of my antiquing wax into a cup with another chippy brush. And I am just going to swipe it back and forth all over this frame. I'm gonna put it on the sides of the frame. I'm gonna put it on the top of the frame. And I'm going to add a little extra attention to the corners and where the pieces of the wood meets. Because that's where it would collect dust. That's where it would age normally. And I want to keep that look, you know, keep the look of it being aged. I don't want a solid color here. So I'm going to continue along, get right down in all of those little cracks. I'm not adding a lot of paint. Then I'm going to go back with a damp cloth and just wipe it down so that it smears all those ridges out and kind of softens the lines that I created when I was putting that on there. It just kind of blends it out and it looks so much better. Yep, this is a better look I think. I'm just showing you again, be sure that you wipe down on the insides too. And this is the look that we have created. To put a hanger on the back, I'm just going to add one of these saw tooth hangers, a little bit of my fix all from Dollar Tree. I'm going to place it down approximately where the center would be. And then using a little hot glue, I'm going to give it some quick support 
right over where the nails would go and allow it some time to dry. So for the next part of this project, we're gonna work on a little wreath. My pieces are all thrifted, all of the pieces you see and the wreath. I'm going to pull these apart and cut them into pieces that are fairly the same size and shape. And then I'm going to start placing them down into this wreath. This is one of those vine, I guess, wreaths. And so you don't have to use glue necessarily to hold your pieces or any wire or any other type of thing because a wired piece of greenery or floral will press straight down in here and will hold itself pretty well. Again, if you're gonna be using this for outdoors, you wanna give it some more support, you wanna use some glue, something like that so that the wind doesn't blow anything away. But I'm gonna keep these pieces inside. I really, really love the look of this. And then I'm going to add that same greenery that we used on the project before on the little clock. Bigger pieces of it though. And I'm just going to place it around my wreath until I get the fullness that I like. So I don't count here with doing this type of a wreath because I like the cottagey rustic wild look. And then I am just going to add in some more of those little green. They look like tiny roses, but that's not what it is. It's more like a seed pod of some type. So I'm gonna add those all around. This is gonna coordinate very nicely with our first project with a little bird. So I'm just going to fluff it out a little bit and then any places that have a little bald spot, I'm gonna take one or two little random pieces from the picks that I had left over and I'm just going to glue those in so that it's pretty much symmetrical, you know. And then here's kind of a flat spot, so I'm gonna add a piece in here. See, it kind of fills it out. Then these had some really pretty little berries and I'm just gonna add those in. And then I can just decide what I want the top to be and what I want the bottom to be, how I want it to hang. And I love the look of this. Nice and full and flyaway and wispy and rustic. I'm going to take just a hanger that I had off of another project. I'm gonna push it down into there and I am going to hot glue it. My neighbors are building a house next door, so if you hear a bunch of noise, that would be my dog barking at the construction workers. Okay, so I'm just going to take that over the back. I'm gonna slide it straight down through where our hook is. And then pretty much in the center here, I'm gonna add some hot glue and a little piece of paper or construction paper right over the back. You can just use a scrap and that's gonna hang it. And then you can just push it toward the center. And look at this little beauty. Now I can use this piece and I've been hanging on to it forever. So I'm so grateful to have the opportunity to make something wonderful from these On to the next pieces. project, number five. I found this little, I think it's a bill organizer or mail organizer. And it's really lightweight and I love the look of it. It's, it's pretty. So I'm just going to start by removing the little hanger that had seen better days. I'm gonna take my hot glue and go along the bottom because as you saw before, those little slats can move freely up and down and I don't want them to do that. I want them to be locked into place. So I'm just gonna use the hot glue right up against the border and the edge of those so that nothing comes loose. I've got my little skinny brush here. I like to use this on projects that have a lot of slats or like wicker type things and baskets because they get in all of the cracks. But you can use a soft shoe brush, anything like that to clean your objects or you know, if you wanna use Swiffer or something, you could. After it's clean, I'm gonna spray it with this Rust-Oleum. I give it two good coats and leave it in the sun to dry. And I did leave it outside for about an hour to fully dry after the second coat. While that's drying, I'm going to look at my crap foam. You can get yours at Dollar Tree. I will end up using a white foam that I thrifted. These are some flowers that a friend gave me. She took them out of some greenery so she could redo her projects. So this is what it looks like painted. And now I'm gonna use some burlap to make sort of a backing behind the little wicker crisscross there. I'm just gonna measure about what I'm gonna need for each of those little pockets and then cut it down. 
I'm going to take a piece of cardboard, and this is from the uh, one of the Dollar Tree calendars. I always save this stuff. It's perfect for projects, little extra things. I'm just going to kind of fold it and press down where I think I'm going to need to cut this and make it like a little guide. Then I'm going to cut out my piece, test it out to make sure it's going to fit in the little pocket, and it fits perfectly. I don't even have to glue it. Yes, I love it when that happens. Then I'm going to take my burlap and just begin to wrap it around this piece of cardboard. I'm using tape here. Uh, it's like a masking tape. I'm just using tape instead of hot glue because I do not want to burn my fingers off and you will with this type of project. So the tape works best and nobody is going to see it. I'm going to take the bottoms and kind of fold it like you would a present or a gift and just add more tape. Removing a little bit of excess and this is going to hold it just fine for what we need and this is what it's going to look like right behind our little wicker our little crisscross whatever that is there whatever pattern and I'm just going to press it into place no glue required I love it see we put those in there because I don't want my floral foam showing so this is a perfect way to hide it and it gives it again that rustic look that I'm always going for in my home. I'm going to take the block and I just use the big one and cut it right down the middle with my ruler. And rather than gluing it and glue dripping all over my project, I've got some of these wreath pins or I don't know exactly what they're called. You feel free to comment below and let me know what these are called, but they work perfect for this. I just kind of like straddle them over a piece of the wood and then go straight into the block and it holds it perfectly. I'm going to take my longest picks for the bottom pocket and just start placing those in as is. So they have greenery on the bottom and they have a long wispy top. I love that. I think it's perfect for this project. They're so dainty but they're full and they just I love these. But you can use whatever flowers you like. I'm just going to continue around until I get it as full as I like and I'm going to put some right down in the space between where the the foam is and the side of the little pocket. If you want to use glue to secure these down just to make sure then you can certainly do that but you don't have to. They stayed very nicely for me just like this. And then for the top piece for that top pocket, I'm going to cut these down. I'm going to cut the greenery sections away from the flowers, just like this, with my little clippers. Don't ruin your scissors. Then I'm going back in with my pins and securing those to the back so they don't wobble around on the bottom and the top. Love these pins. I thrifted them, but you can get these at craft stores. with. They probably don't cost very much at all. And then once they're secure, I'm going to go ahead and go in with my flowers in the back. And for me, these types of flowers, there's really no particular pattern that you use. Um, I'm just looking for equal fullness at the, at the end. You know, I'm just putting my greenery in the back, putting a little bit of the greenery in the front, but I want the little flowers to be the highest um, section in this top section. I want them to be the tallest part. And I like that it's graduated, that I have the little short things on the top and that I have the longer ones on the bottom. Again, make this your own. That's what my channel is all about. Now I'm going to make a little bow here. This beautiful ribbon is a linen blend that I got from burlapfabric.com. I love to use this for bows that are kind of small because you don't have to do a lot of fluffing. There's no wire in it, but it gives a really pretty look. I'm just going to make a very simple bow. You saw how I did that. And then I'm going to make a few knots in the back to hold my bow together so that it can withstand a little bit of pulling and fluffing. And right over that spot that's missing a slat, I'm just going to tie it right down. And now you'll never even know that there's anything missing. Don't you love that? I love that. I love it so much. 
I'm going to do a double knot. Certainly feel free to add a little glue if you would like, but I'm, I'm satisfied that this is going to stay in place. And then dovetail your ends to whatever length you like. I uh, had them a little bit longer originally, but decided that I would go a little bit closer to the length of the little basket there, or the pocket. And I wanted to add a little more greenery to the top of this bow. So I'm going to add two pieces of greenery and a little flower. Y'all be sure that you watch everybody in this playlist. This is such a fun, open collaboration. And you're going to find the links to the ladies that I mentioned before in the description box below, as well as the playlist link. Be sure you check everybody out, give them some love and support, and if you go from my channel to their channels, let them know that I sent you. Isn't this pretty? So to hang it, I'm going to just make a very simple little tie, you see? Very simple, just a loop. And then I'm going to use a little hot glue on the back, press it down and hold it in place. I believe in you guys, I know that you can do these if you don't have items to, that are thrift flips, maybe, maybe you don't have a good thrift store. You can always use something that someone has given you. You can use something that is on the side of the road. You can use something that you already have and give it a second life. So many options. I don't even know which one of these is my favorite, but I really like all of these. So, for the first of eight, we got some more block minis. These are super easy to do, and I'm going to give you some options. This is Dollar Tree stickers. I got them in the crafter section. You can get yours anywhere you can find them. I thought these were perfect. When I saw them, I was inspired to do this project. There are 96 stickers in there. I've got some little wood blocks. I also have some tower blocks, in case you don't have them, and also some thrifted little... Um, scrabble pieces if you need them. So I'm going to cut this border off to make it smaller and test it out and see which one of these is going to be the best option. So now I have just the little face on the little chocolate bar and it fits absolutely perfectly onto that square. There's just a little bit of overhang but I'll show you how to fix that shortly. So if you don't have any paint this is an option for you. Go ahead and use your little stickers and there's a chocolate bar, a graham cracker, and marshmallow. And there are several different faces to choose from. The marshmallow is a little bit bigger. It's kind of rounded on the sides and the bottom. So just be aware, it's gonna have to have a little more trimming down than the other ones. And you can do it all over if you want to, but I wanted to test it out with just doing around the sides and not using anything in the top or the bottom. So again, if you have no paint, you could do it just like this. You can use some Mod Podge or double stick tape to help it stay in place if you would like. I decided to try mine with a white top and a white bottom and then stickers around the four sides. And I like this better. So I'm just using some of my chalk paint here to, to paint this up, but you can use acrylic or whatever you have. And again, you don't, if you don't have paint, you don't have to worry about it. Just to make sure that my stickers stay in place for a long time, I'm using some of this glue stick. And don't worry about the purple, it does disappear when it's dry. And I'm just going to face these all in the same direction. So each one of these little stickers will be facing outward so that if they were sat on the bottom, you could see all the faces in the correct position. Sorry about the focus there, just trying to focus on the background, set of my hand, and then again on each side. So what I have is a white bottom, a white top. I have two graham crackers, a chocolate, and a marshmallow, just like when you build your own s'mores. So if you have some sharp scissors, you can trim those around to make them fit perfectly and have no overhang. And that's what they'll look like when they are all done. Aren't they cute? There's so many options with these two. This just could be a base idea for you. Perfect for a tiered tray, I think. I'm going to show you all of these on a tiered tray at the end, so be sure that you stay tuned. Now we're going to do a mini s'more garland. 
I'm gonna use some thrifted Scrabble blocks, but you can get these at Dollar Tree. I'm gonna show you a little trick so that you can paint these without, even though I have paint all over my hands, with as little mess as possible. Just use a tiny dot of glue, put it down on a piece of cardboard or some leftover paper or whatever you have here, scraps and then just paint on the face and then that way you can face you can paint all the way around the edges too and you don't get it all over your fingers and you don't keep having to repaint every place that you touch where you know kind of lifts up the paint so just a little dot and it'll hold it in place and it works really great too for in the end when you are drying everything they won't move around and scoot all over the table so I have a little drying tool here, but you can use a blow dryer, you can use a fan, or you can just wait for these to dry on your own. Once they're dry, we can apply the stickers. These stickers do have a white border, um, as you noticed in the other picture. But we don't have to do a lot of trimming here, except on this little marshmallow, and then a little bit on the other ones. It's kind of rounded on the sides, so we're just gonna cut the rounded sections off, and it'll fit right down on here. The reason I painted these white is because I want them to stand out. And I think this is a perfect way to do it. Although the marshmallow kind of blends right in. I love these little faces. These are so cute. Have you seen these at your Dollar Tree? I was very surprised because it doesn't look like a Greenbrier ba uh, brand. Look at those faces. Those are so cute. So now they're down, they're dry, they're stuck down. And I decided that I'm going to use some more of those Scrabble pieces to spell out, to spell out s'more. Or s'mores, whatever you wanna do here. And then decide how I wanna do it. Do I wanna do a double strand? Do I wanna do a single strand? What pattern do I wanna use with my little faces here? And then what kind of string are we gonna to use to hang it? So I've got some options and I think I'm gonna go with this jute here. Just my preference, you can use whatever type of cording or jute colored twine whatever you have I've put this on my cutting board because it is like a silicone base so if glue gets on there it'll peel off rather than it sticking down to the paper my crafting paper that is on my table so this just keeps my workspace nice and tidy and it peels away very easily I'm pressing that down I put a little hot glue on the top of each one of the letters and then I'm pressing the rope into it now I had this on my cool temperature so no worries but protect your fingers and then I'm gonna start adding on the little cute sticker faces. And you can do whatever, you know, whatever pattern you like here, whichever way you like it. And certainly you don't have to do one of each. You could do all marshmallows if you wanted to, or you know, whatever you like. But I think this is a cute pattern. You can also add beads if you would like. But I decided to use me painting that. these blocks. So I have two light, I have two blocks that are painted in a lighter color, brown. I have a white block, and I use my chalk paint for that, and then I have a darker color brown, which is like a teddy bear brown, that's going to represent our chocolate. So we have one graham cracker, one marshmallow, we're going to add the chocolate, and then we're going to add one more graham cracker on the top. Now what I'm doing is just squishing this down so that my block is flat and it, it appears to be more like one piece instead of a bunch of gaps and I don't want glue to come out. So that's why I did it this way. You can see it sliding around. I'm just trying to square it up here. Not a big deal if you don't. Pull them apart and fix it if you need to. And this is what it's gonna look like. A little s'more. So I'm gonna put a bow on the top. For those of you who like bows, if you don't wanna do it that way, you can certainly try any other little technique you wanna use to doll it up. I'm gonna double over this twine. And this was in the Shore Living, I think it's called. Um, it's the little beachy section of Dollar Tree. And I'm just gonna double it up and make a simple little bow, little shoestring bow with it. Fluff it around, pull them out like I like them. And because it has a little burlap, it does have some stiffness in it, which I like, because you can kind of work with those little loops and they'll stay where you want them to stay. I cut apart the section that had the little um, that was doubled up so that I would have equal tails on both sides and then I'm going to add some glue in the middle and put it right on the top of our little s'more. And there you go. You know you always got to fluff that bow. Cute. 
but I think they look great on tier trays. So I think this is something that you can use now and you can carry it on through and use it for other holidays and seasons. Using whatever type of popsicle stick you have, and mine are just about the standard size, little crab sticks. I'm gonna use two for the legs and I'm gonna cut one into three pieces. And these are gonna be the rungs of the ladder. I'm just using my little um, pliers here, my little tools, they cut really well. Somebody told me that they are called bullnose pliers. Uh, feel free to correct me or give your um, your knowledge. I'd love to have more information on that, but all I know is it is a very good multi-purpose tool. And I got it at a thrift store, so you know, I love it even more. All right, so we're just gonna take the three sections and decide where we want the rungs of the ladder to be. Fix yours however you like. I'm going to put mine three, um, one's gonna be almost in the center and then the other two are going to be around and about mm, maybe three quarters of an inch down from the ends. I left the ladder legs round for now, but uh, you know, that's your choice. You can leave them round or you can cut them off and I do cut them off shortly. You can leave it plain like this. You can take some antiquing wax and color it or stain it. You can paint it any color you like. You could do black if you wanted to, whatever you like. I went ahead and cut the bottoms off thinking that I might want to keep the round sections and I just went over it with my plaster chalk paint. I used plaster instead of bright white. Plaster just seems to me more like a marshmallow color. So I thought it was fitting. And I'm gonna go over, all over this. You could use a little glue on the back to paint it as well if you wanted to. But I got in a rush. I'm drying it all off now. And then I'm gonna take my sanding block and I'm gonna rough it up and distress it a bit. So I'm just turning it at an angle, like a 45 degree angle, and just kind of taking off the paint on the edges of the pieces. And of course, on the feet, that's where they would normally get where, you know, where you put them down. And so I'm looking at it and trying to decide, yeah, I think I want to take the roundness off. Realistically, you wouldn't have a ladder this small, but if it was a big ladder, you wouldn't have round feet. I don't believe that would be safe. So I'm just knocking those off making them nice and flat. I'm gonna recycle a project that I did last fall. Very easy, these come from the Dollar Tree. And you can get them in a variety of backgrounds. I am just going to be painting this section with that same plaster chalk paint. This does not have to be neat because it's going to be covered. I went to Canva and printed out some s'mores And I do have Canva Pro now, so I am loving that. I get all kinds of goodies, and I don't have to search all over the internet for them. I'm just going to trim two different sizes. I printed off two different sizes of the same s'more. And it's gonna fit nicely on here. So I wrapped some burlap just on the front side of there after the paint's dry. I'm gonna press it down into the frame. If I do it this way, I don't have to burn my fingers or risk making a mess with the glue. It's just not even necessary for this project. I'm just gonna press it in there and then use some really sharp scissors and trim all of that off. Be careful, don't wanna try to cut your scissors over those little, those little hook pieces there because they will dull your blades down. They are metal. Press them back down. I'm just securing my little strand of beads on the top and I'm gonna look at my placement I'm gonna use these little tower blocks to give them some dimension and raise them up off of the burlap. I love doing this and I do it with a lot of my projects. Feel free to leave this flat if you would like to put it right down on your burlap. It'll stick down just fine, but I'm going to raise mine up a little bit. It just makes it different, you know? It makes it unique. I make it my own, so you make it your own. Oh, I love s'mores. Do y'all like s'mores? And do you, have you tried the new thing where you put the Reese's peanut butter cup on instead of the Hershey's? I've heard that's good and I love Reese's. Just wondering if it's worth it. I bet it is. All right, so now to add a little extra something to it, I'm gonna take these stickers that I've had for a while. I do not know where they came from, but you can use 
any stickers that you find and certainly Dollar Tree has a lot of alphabet stickers that you can use and I'm just going to put the word s'more on here I start off with just putting s'more and then I decide maybe I should add an s since there are two in the frame and my little eight-year-old daughter is trying to teach me grammar and she told me that it needed an s so thank you very much so there we go and I'm gonna leave the beads the way they are but you could paint them if you wanted to I think they look good now started off with it being kind of a large sign but I do cut it down I'm gonna cut this paint stick right underneath where the curve is and I'm just measuring to make sure that I cut it straight across and I'm gonna use those same pliers to cut it down I know you can't see very well right now but I'm taking a little nip into each side and then I'll cut further in if the wood splits when you do this um, in my experience it will go right back together so don't be too worried but you cut it any way that you want to cut it you can score it you can cut it with anything you have all right I'm using my sanding block and I'm gonna smooth down that edge and this will end up being about I think maybe nine inches I'm gonna go ahead and take that same plaster chalk paint that marshmallow color that I like so much and I'm going to paint the whole stick this color. This is going to be like a base layer, but it is also going to represent the marshmallow when we hand paint the s'more. So I'm gonna go all the way to the end. I'm not worried about the edges. It's really not any concern, but you can if you want. Make sure that it is dry between putting on your layers. I'm gonna take those same browns I'm going to take a little slanted brush here and I'm going to start with my chocolate layer. Now you can do it however you want to, but I think this is a great chocolate color. Keeping in mind right above this line is where the cracker layer is going to be. So that part is going to be pretty flat. You know, crackers are kind of flat. But when the chocolate starts to melt, it's going to dip and run over onto the marshmallow layer, which is going to be under here. So I'm adding some waves to make this look like the chocolate has melted down into the marshmallow layer. And you can just make this however you want. You can leave your straight if you would like, but I like the idea of a gooey, yummy s'more. So I'm gonna quickly just dry that layer. It is acrylic paint, so it takes just a little bit longer to dry. Then I'm gonna flip it over and do a graham cracker line this is just gonna be pretty much a straight line, as straight as I can get it here. Just like if you were looking at a s'more. This part's pretty easy. And actually the entire thing was pretty easy. If you just have in your mind what a graham cracker looks like, and hey, if you don't and you can't imagine it, just pull up a picture on your phone, just Google an image, and then you can just go from there. All right, so I'm gonna leave the section somewhat in the middle that's going to be our marshmallow the reason this other graham cracker line looks kind of wavy is because the marshmallow has melted onto it so you see does that make sense to you so now you kind of get the idea of a melted marshmallow and chocolate layer overlapping onto our crackers and that's how it looks you know if you did this with red and pink it would look like a strip of bacon wouldn't it okay so I'm just gonna take a little bit of my jute and wrap it around one end. And I do um, glue it down in the back. And then I made the decision to cut this thing in half. I actually tried to do this um, large. You could leave it large and write something on it if you wanted. But it was just a little too big for the simplicity of what I wanted to write on it. So I just cut it in half, sanded that little section down, and then I'm just gonna freehand the word s'mores. Now this is kind of, I know you can't see it very well and I do apologize for that, but it will, it will clear up and you'll be able to see it. I don't have the best handwriting, so if you have a Cricut and you wanna use that, you can. You could use those same stickers from that sticker sheet that you used before and you could put it on there with stickers. But I just want you to be confident with whatever you have because if you don't have alphabet stickers, you don't have to give up on your project, you know? Just go and write it in there any way you want. Very easy. And you don't have to write anything on yours. You could leave it just like this. You could make two of these. You could put them together and make a set of tags to hang off your tiered tray. 
whatever you would like to do. I'm just going in and adding some little dots on both of the edges. This is a black marker that I'm using. I think it's my black Arteza, um, one of my black Arteza markers, the fine point. See, not bad. And then because s'mores make us so happy, I added a little smiley face. But you can leave that off, of course. I was practicing my handwriting on the back of the stick, you can see. Now we gotta make a stand, so I'm just gonna use one little block, little hot glue. Now you can now find little it. signs like this at Dollar Tree or little picture frames, whichever way, um, all the time. Mine are thrifted. I'm gonna use three different color trims. I'm going to have a graham cracker color, a chocolate color, and a marshmallow color. So I'm gonna cut two pieces that need to be just long enough to wrap around the back to represent our crackers. And I'm gonna put the first layer down, which is going to be my cracker. Just a little bit of glue on the back and wrap it around, making sure, you know, that it's fairly straight. Well, it would be fairly straight across the front. So you turn it over, you can see. And if it's not, while the glue's still wet, you can adjust it. So this beautiful brownish bronze color is going to be our chocolate level layer. And I'm going to add some hot glue here and put it right next to the layer that is above it. Very easy, but you need to protect your fingers, remember. We don't want to burn our fingers because then we can't craft. This is gonna be a marshmallow layer. By the way, you can color your own. Um, I know that you can get these little trims. Two of mine came from Amazon. One of those came from the thrift store, but I know that you can get them at Dollar Tree now, and if you don't have the right colors, you can dye them with tea or with coffee. You can also paint them if you would like, but it gives a lot of texture, and I really like that about this project. It's the texture of it. You know, this is, it's gonna represent a graham cracker. Does it look exactly like one? No, it does not. But I think it's really pretty. And I like the little, I like the textural element. So I'm gonna use some more of this little jute and twine rope here. And I'm gonna go underneath so we don't have any hot glue on the front. So I'm just gonna use a little skewer thing, a little mini skewer, and go right underneath. And then I'm going to tie it into a little bow. I'm not gonna pull it tight, but you certainly can do that if you want to. And I'm just gonna make two little loops, wrap the loops around each other, and tuck one of them on the inside. And now you can just pull the tails to adjust the size of your loops to get it the size that you like. If you wanna leave that part off, you can. So I also printed this off from Canva. I'm going to cut these little pieces into like tags just cutting off the ends once they're rectangles you know just cut the ends off and then it looks like a tag and I'm gonna do the same thing with happiness we could all use a little more happiness couldn't we yes we could and you could you could do some more joy some more happiness some more kindness some more love some more summer anything that you want to do that gives you a little positive message to look at Think that happiness is good I use joy a lot so I switched it up this time and I like it right there so I'm gonna add just a little hot glue on the back and then stick it kind of tuck it right underneath the loops of the bow and now we have this little precious s'more happiness sign and it has its own little kickstand this is really cute all right, so you're gonna use some beads. You can use any old white bead you have or you can use any bead that you can paint. I got these little skewer sticks. I'm gonna use the plaster paint. And then I have, um, I decided I wanted to use these because they look to me more like a marshmallow, the shape of a marshmallow. So I'm just gonna add some glue in here on my cool temperature just to kind of fill the bead up. And because the inside of the bead is much longer than the diameter of the skewer stick we're putting in there, I need to build it out a little bit so that the stick will stay toward the center. I'm just gonna twist it in there to make sure that the glue is everywhere it needs to be. And I'm not concerned with the glue on the tip or what is underneath. We're not gonna worry about that because it does add to the look. 
Um, you know, if you've roasted marshmallows before, you know good and well that it slides up and down that stick and makes a little bit of a gooey mess. So we're just gonna work with that. I'm gonna add a little bit on the top. And then you can set it aside to dry. I just had mine sitting in a tape spool so it would stay upright. We're gonna do the same thing on this one. Place it in there toward the center. Now to paint it, I'm gonna put it in a piece of foam, a little styrofoam, and then I'm going to just paint all over the marshmallow. I'm gonna go around the edges, go underneath the edge, go over the top, go over the edge of the stick, just where, you know, a marshmallow would melt. I'm getting underneath the bottom so that you don't, we don't see any of that brown under there. And then you can let this dry or you can add to your stick. I'm gonna use just the tiniest amount of antiquing wax on these sticks to make them look like they've been outside, maybe even been whittled down from a stick when you go camping or maybe found in the woods somewhere. You can skip this part if you would like. If you don't have antiquing wax, you can use coffee to stain it or you can use paint. I'm gonna go right around the bottom and then we're gonna dry them. This part, they need to be good and dry because we're gonna add just a little bit of streakiness from what was left on that brush all over that marshmallow. This is gonna make it look like it was roasted. It's gonna give it that yummy brown crispness. Uh, who wants a s'more right now? If you don't want one after you watch this video, then you just must have an aversion to marshmallows, is all I can say. Cause I know I want some, look at that. Doesn't that look realistic? I mean, you know, as far as crafting goes, that's pretty good. Now this is a little thrifted piece. I don't even know. It's some type of a log or some old coral or something. Came with some beachy stuff. You can just stick those sticks down in that hole, just like that. If you don't have something like that, you can use a little clay pot with some foam in it. You could glue it down onto any stick you find in the yard, whatever you got. I'm gonna cut these at two different lengths and I'm just gonna poke them down in here. I'm not even gonna glue them. And they are ready for the next camper. All right, so I'm gonna give you two tray options here. The first one is a tear tray. This is a Target tray that I got on clearance for $2.50. There is two different little white trays and it has gold trim. You can paint yours whatever you want because the plates come off. You can actually use them for desserts. I love that about this. Very easy options here. Now, there are some more of those little s'more stickers on the ladder. Wanted to make it look a little more cohesive. I like this. Very simple. And your other option would be to use just a riser. And this is one that I made in a video a while back. So this is one tier. You can decorate on top, put the little banner or the garland to hang down on the bottom, and then put your goodies around the base of it. What do you think about this? This is going to be a thrift flip. So I found this little box. Pretty sure there was a clock on the inside, but the back wasn't there and the insides weren't either. I'm going to use a piece of floral foam or styrofoam and some white chalk paint and a brush. This is a little window clean and then a bunch of whatever flowers you choose. I'm gonna take this piece and paint it white. Now it's had a good scrubbing, so it's nice and clean. And now I'm just gonna take this chalk paint and make sure it's in all the cracks and all the grooves. I want it to have two coats of a nice full coverage and then we're going to distress it. You know, because I like my rustic farmhouse cottagey look. Once it is dry completely, I just dry brush the handle on the top. Then we'll move on to the next step. Now you can certainly spray paint the inside if you like, but it doesn't bother me, so I'm going to leave it as is. I'm going to take a piece of this styrofoam and put it right on the inside and press it down onto the bottom. I want it to be close to level with the, um, the opening on the front so that I can put my flowers in there and you'll be able to see them. I'm gonna trim everything down so that it 
fits inside the box where we can see it in the front and I'm kind of just putting in putting those in in just like a little angle but you can do it any way you want to um, if you have an old clock at the house that doesn't work anymore you can just gut it take the stuff out of it and you can make something pretty with it and I know um, you can find things like that this at lots of thrift stores so you might be able to find something if this is inspiring you to make one of your own now I'm just gonna pull these flowers around their own wire so they're easily trimmed down and movable and I can position them exactly where I want them you can also use a little hot glue to you know maybe stick the petals down on the outside if you need a little more control so I'm just gonna continue to fluff around here till I get it how I like it now I'm gonna distress it you can do your distressing first if you would like but um, I got excited about my flowers so I went ahead and did that first you can use a sanding block like this you can use a piece of sanding paper if you would like you can use probably a steel wool a wire brush anything that you want to distress your piece and if you don't want to do this you could also use some type of antiquing wax if you would like to do that so for the smaller areas I'm just going to use this paper and I've just got this uh, folded kind of to a point and I'm using the point of it to go around the edges and the ridges I'm gonna do that on the top you can see how I'm distressing it here I want to take a minute to thank Sammy from Unicorn Dust Designs I was part of her spotlight Saturday challenge and I have some videos over there on her channel which I will link below so you can go check it out over there thank you Sammy so much I really enjoyed it so now to put the window cling down I'm just gonna use a little bit of my glue stick rub it in with my finger a little bit and then place this piece down you can trim these pieces up too if you need to and you can write this if you wanted to write it or you could leave it off altogether if you like it's almost like it says hello summer or hello sunshine with those pretty little yellow and white flowers so I like the way that looks I always check my pieces out to see what else do I want to add does it need anything else and in this situation I feel like it needs a little something else but you can leave it off if you want I'm just gonna make a little swag to go on the top and I'm using some more of the pieces that coordinate with what was on the inside of the box and I'm gonna place those down here till I get the shape and the look that I like and I'm gonna take a little of this florist wire and this little it comes on a little paddle I'm gonna kind of wrap it around there and then get it nice and twisted so everything stays together in the middle you can also use like uh, pipe cleaners if you wanted to for this or a twist tie you could also use zip ties whatever you want to use now I'm gonna make my bow and I have this beautiful linen and cotton blend striped piece of ribbon and it doesn't have any wire in it but that's not a concern I'm gonna measure seven inches because that looks like it's gonna fit properly in the middle of that little swag and I'm just gonna fold it over a few times on itself just like so so that I have even number of little loops on each side I'll have two loops on the right and two loops on the left and then I'm just gonna cut it off and we'll make a separate tail and that tail is going to be about 16 inches long I'm just measuring it so 14 and 14 and then a little bit extra so 15 or 16 inches I guess you could say I'm gonna fold this over and dovetail the ends and this is going to be the tail for our bow I'm gonna just pinch it into the middle folding it over to make sure I'm you know pretty much in the center and I'm gonna pinch that together using a piece of jute I'm gonna wrap it around the middle place it down on the table and then give it a couple of knots and this is gonna hold that pleat in the middle and keep our bow cinched in the middle and nice and shapely now you don't want to make a bow with a ribbon that doesn't have wire in it you don't want to make your loops too big because it'll become too floppy and your little loops won't stand out on their own but of course if you like that look then you just go right ahead and do that we always want to make it our own now I'm just gonna tie that right down on top and this is the back of our bow 
Now it should stay in place. Fine. I'm going to reach onto the inside of that bow and pull the top layer up, the bottom layer down, and I'm just going to fluff that out. This is such a pretty ribbon, and it just, it's very farmhouse to me, I think, with the neutral colors and the stripes. And then the pretty little wildflowers just make it rustic and cottagey. So I think it could be a combination for lots of different styles. I'm going to tie it right into the middle of our little swag here, and then keeping those jute strings long, I'm going to use that to wrap around the handle on the top. You know, you could set this on your porch if you have a covered porch. You could put it in your house. And something like this to me would be so pretty to give to a friend, to give to somebody who maybe needs a little bit of, you know, a little sunshine, a little brightness in their day. Something like this would be so cute. Now you can go ahead and put a back on there if you want or put the backing back if you had yours originally. But I'm gonna leave mine open so the light will shine through and you can see the little flowers better. I'm trimming up now. This is like my final look at it to make sure I have it the way I want it. And then you can just use a little bit of hot glue and glue down those little tails if you would like. Just like that also thrifted pieces. These are from a canning set. They came from Goodwill. And then I have a jar lid and I also have some of these old spoons. Now they all have quite a bit of wear on them and I love that they are already aged. We don't have to do any work. I'm also going to use a hammer, some type of a poking tool or a knife or a narrow screwdriver. We're going to use jute. I'm also going to use some beads which you will see later. I'm going to start off by deciding I already know that I want the smallest little, um, I guess we're going to call it a funnel. So we're going to put the, fu the smallest funnel on top and we have to have a way to attach that to the one that's going to be underneath it. So I'm just making a hole and then I'm going to take the bigger one, which is what you're looking at now. I'm going to mark it with my little chalk writer so we can put a bunch of holes in here so that our strings and our spoons will hang down from there. Y'all, it is storming outside, so if you hear the thunder, forgive me, I can't even get that out of the video. Okay, so see, I have all my markings here. I do go back and add one more behind where I just poked the first one. I do that later, and you'll see that shortly. So I'm just kind of drilling into here. You might want to put something underneath it so you don't make a hole in your table. I'm doing it as lightly as possible until I get in this angle, and then I just kind of screw it down a little bit. So you can see how we're going to attach it. Smallest on top, the larger one on the bottom, and then all these little spoons are going to hang down. So now I'm going to take my spoons apart. I'm just going to take this little jump ring and I'm going to put it right here on the large one. and Close it back up. And I'm going to use a piece of jute and I'm just going to poke it through the hole on the bottom of the smaller funnel and I'm going to tie a few knots in here so that it doesn't slide down through the hole that I just made to feed that jute string through. Does that make sense? So see, we don't want that to go all the way through, so it needs to be big enough to hold it. And then I'm going to go through that ring on the bottom and then just tie those together. And then I thought, you know what? Shortly, I'm going to do something a little bit different. You're, you're going to see shortly what I do. But you can do it like this if you don't have beads. All right, so here are all of our spoons. And I am just going to, you don't have to do this in any order, you know. You know what a wind chime looks like. They're hanging at kind of a variety of lengths. Some of them are all at the same length. However you want to do this is going to be absolutely fine as long as they can make contact with each other when the wind blows so that you get that little sound, the little chime sound. I'm going to cut my cords off a little bit longer than I'll need, but just to be sure that I have plenty, I'm just going to make it a little bit longer than I need. We can't add it back, right? But we can cut it off more if we need to. All right. Continue along. Do all your spoons that way. And then this little jar lid is going to be our, 
I don't know if you would call it like a clapper, kind of like in a bell, there's a clapper in the middle. So I don't know if that's what you want to call that or not, but we're just going to do the same thing. We're going to poke a hole in it and we're going to tie knots to hold it in place. Because this is going to be in the center of all of our spoons. It'll give something to hit against. So here are the beads that I've chosen. You can use whatever you want. I know you can get them at Dollar Tree. I just took that knot out. Now I'm going to retie it with the bead on it. And I'm going to tie it down shorter. You can see what I'm doing. Sometimes it's easier just to watch than have somebody explain it, isn't it? Okay, so you get the idea here. Now we can trim off what we don't need and get rid of that. And this is how that section's going to look. And then I'm going to add a bead to each one of the spoons like this, trimming off what we don't need to make it look nice and neat, and then adding a little bit of hot glue on the string above the knot. This is going to keep the bead from moving around and it's also going to keep your knot from coming undone. Keep in mind, if you're doing this outside, you're going to want to use Gorilla Glue or you're going to use some type of E6000 or something like that to hold everything in place because the heat on regular hot glue will cause it to melt. It's just like a silicone, something like that. Um, I don't know what hot glue is made out of, but um, yeah, it just releases in the heat. So you, you want to be sure that you uh, prevent that from happening with your wind chimes. You don't want them to fall apart. So now I've added one bead here and I'm going to make a same process, going to trim off what we don't need and slide that bead down and I'm going to add more beads onto this strand. So I'm going to tie a few knots and I'm going to slide the knot as close as I can down to the bead and I'll do that process with each one of these so that there's a little space in between there. And I think it looks nice. Do this however you want. If you want your beads to be right on top of each other, you can do that. Just keep on going down. I want to take a minute to thank everybody who has come over from Sammy's channel to come over here and check my channel out. It means a lot to me. Um, you are so welcomed here. I would love to have you as part of our YouTube family. Okay, so now that we got all those beads on there the way that we want them, feed it through and I put it through the middle hole there and I'm gonna tie a knot and then I'm gonna add another knot on the top of that so that it doesn't slide through. And you can make this as long or as short as you want to. A little glue here underneath the knot. It's going to hold that in place. And when we trim it down, it's going to keep it from coming apart or fraying. Now I'm just putting a little bit of cool temperature glue on here and twisting it. Now I have a point so I can easily feed that jute up through there. You know, sometimes jute will fray and it's hard to kind of push the beads and everything through there. You can just use a little bit of hot glue or a little piece of clear tape and you won't have any problem with it. So for each one of these pieces of jute with the spoon on it, I'm gonna pull up through there. And then once I get them all pulled through, I'm gonna decide how long I want the strings to be. This is kind of a process of holding the strings, lifting it up, looking at it, moving the length down, tying your knot. It doesn't take a long time to do it. It's just, you know, it's just part of it, but I think that it's worth it. And continue along just like this. And then once you get all of your spoons tied on and the little clapper in the middle, you can go through there and trim off whatever you don't want. You can shorten up anything you want to shorten up, which is kind of what I'm looking at here, how long I want those to be. And then trim off and add your glue to each of those little sections underneath the knot. Mm -hmm. 
this one needs to be a little shorter, so I'm going to go ahead and do that. That's easy to do. All right, so just finalizing all of these to make sure nothing comes loose. If you had a little bird that you wanted to put in here or a little nest, that would be super cute. And that second funnel, but for me, I'm just going to add a little jute bow. I'm just wrapping it around my fingers about mm, probably 10 times and then cut it off. These are going to be the little loops of our bow. I'm going to lay it down and then I'm going to cut, I think I have three or four strands that are about 12 inches long and this is going to be the tails. You can use some type of ribbon here. You can use a little, little florals here. You can use anything you want in there or you could just leave it where the knots are showing. You could add more beads in, whatever. Use your imagination. What would you put in there? Now all I'm doing with these little, what's gonna be our tails, is just tying them right around the middle of that little bundle of jute and then pulling them down so that the tails will hang down underneath it. And then all you have to do is just fluff out the little loops there to make it a cute little fluffy little bow. I'm gonna add that right in the center of where all those knots are and it'll just hang down and when the wind blows, it'll give it a little more interest Maybe catch the wind and spin it a little more. I love wind chimes. My husband's not a big fan, but I love them. I like to wake up in the morning and know if it's windy or breezy outside. I can hear it through my the double doors in my room. I really like it. Plus, we live in a tornado-prone zone. We're going to use some floral foam and some more jute. I also have two strainer baskets. They have handles on them. They are the exact same thing and they are aged. They're about 10 inches. I am going to cut off a section of my jute and take the bottom of that strainer of one of them, pull it up, going to make a nice thick fat knot with a couple of loops in it right in the center of one of these baskets. I don't want anything slipping out and it's going to be kind of heavy after we add our florals to it so you want to be sure that you make that nice and thick you could also tie a, a metal washer on there if you wanted to just to be on the safe side i'm going to take the handle of the other basket and i'm going to wrap it around the handle and tie it up close underneath and then cut it off you can see how it works here you can add glue under there if you would like to you see how it's going to look? All right, so we're going to start off with the bottom section. I'm going to cut some scrap paper. Since this has holes in the bottom, and we obviously do not need holes in the bottom if we're using faux greenery, I'm going to go ahead and use a little bit of hot glue. This is on my cool temp setting and I'm going to place this down in that basket. Lift it up so I don't glue it to my table. And this will give us something that we can glue down the foam, the styrofoam to, and help hold it in place. We're gonna do the same thing to the top section. I saved the backings to my stickers and all sorts of things, so I have little scraps of paper all over my table. Right, I'm going to add some glue here and then just put that glued section right on top of the paper and do the same thing with the top this is part of a hula skirt I'm just going to use that, tuck it around my foam here, and then start adding in my plants. These are thrifted florals. This is a really pretty type of greenery. I love this. And I'm just going to add a few pieces. I only have three of them, so I'm trying to balance it because um, these pieces need to be balanced with your florals so that they don't fall to one side or the other, you know. 
You'll get what I'm saying when you see the end screen when I show you all the pieces final. Finally done. All right, so then I'm gonna add some ivy. You can add any type of scraps, anything that you have. The idea, in my opinion, is to put the pieces that are gonna hang down or what you would call the spillers, you would want those on the bottom, most likely, because you can't put too much height because the bottom of the top basket will hit it. So the things that are gonna stick up, we can put on the top, just like this. If you don't like the ones I'm using, that's totally fine. Just use what you have. I know that um, what you won't see until the end screen is that I did add some succulents in there, just here and there to just really fill it out and give it a little more interest. So just continue along until you have your baskets full. I'm going to use four little houses in two different sizes, some wooden letters that say home, this beautiful wall sticker from Dollar Tree, some white linen chalk paint. This is a thrifted little sign. I'm also going to use some pavement paint. I'm going to use some sanding pieces, some tint, and some brushes. I'm going to start off by sanding this down. You can use a sanding block or you can sand it by hand. I did take these outside just to make it quicker and use my hand sander. And I got all over the surfaces because they're kind of splintery. I'm going to use some of this beautiful wood tint and I'm going to rub this all over. It did not stain my hands. I washed as soon as I got done and it came off my nails and my fingers perfectly. So yay, yay, yay. Love it. I'm going to do this all over the entire thing. If you would rather paint your pieces, you can certainly do that. But I love this stain. You could also use your Waverly Wax if you wanted to, except that I'm not sure it would stick very well. Um, I'm not sure if it would stick very well to the window cling later. Or the wall cling, excuse me. All right, now we're going to be painting these because they're not all the same color, and I want them white. I'm just adding a little hot glue down to a placemat so they don't move around while I paint them. And I love that idea because I'm not getting chalk paint all over my hands and then fingerprints all over my letters. So I'm just going to go all over the tops and the sides and all around. I'm showing you that I'm doing coating the entire thing and I do give these two coats of chalk paint. Once they're dry, I'm going to distress them with a chippy brush and a little bit of my antiquing wax. And I'm just going to tap that out so most of it is off of there. I want a really dry brush to do this. I don't like my distressing to look muddy. I like it to just look like it's kind of aged. So that's what I'm doing here, and I'm dragging that across the surface so that it hits on all of those edges. You can see here in this close-up that it's getting on the edges, and that's the look I am going for. Once I've done that, I'm going to set them aside and let them dry. I'm gonna cut down my pieces of this wall sign into the same measurements as the houses. I'm going to cut them down with my rotary cutter and my metal ruler. Just makes it easier. And it's a lot easier to cut it when they're still on their backing than trying to cut them after you've peeled them off. I'm going to take some of my Mod Podge, put it down on the first house, and I'm just going to kind of work in order here. I'm going to start with the end of the sign or the, um, the wall cling, the wall sticker, and put that down and then cover it with Mod Podge and then move on to the next one and do the same thing. And then my Mod Podge, they are adhesive on the back, these wall stickers, obviously they're stickers, but they're not gonna stick down, um, they're not gonna stick for very long. So using some Mod Podge is gonna seal that in and really keep it in place. So here they are and it's time to let them dry once they're dry, fit the pieces back together, and look how gorgeous this is. Very pretty. Now I know that I want to add my letters across here. And this is how they're going to look. I'm just going to kind of measure up, and I know that I want them all to be about the same measurement up. So I just use my metal ruler to go through here and measure them and make sure that they are all in the same spots. Very easy. All right, now I'm gonna take that pavement acrylic paint. I'm gonna add that onto this black sign. 
it's a almost like a slate gray color I really like this color compared to just a black dark black so I'm using that here I'm gonna paint it on all surfaces get a nice good coat and then once it's dry I'm going to start distressing it I'm gonna go over all of the edges like this on each of the ledges on each of the corners I'm going to distress this down and this is how it's gonna look and this is gonna be the base of our sign so when I figure out what my center is, I'm gonna start working to hot glue each of these pieces down to my sign. If you wanna have something more permanent, grab your wood glue and use that here as well. I'm gonna work from the end, and I have it at this angle because I can see that it's the same distance from the front and the back so that it is centered in the sign. And I'm gonna continue along lining these up making them nice and neat and try not to make a mess with your glue make sure that it's kind of in the center of your block so that it doesn't squish out everywhere we want this to look high end okay so once that is down i just thought it would be cute to add a couple of greenery picks that look like the greenery in the sticker right to the top of the sign and these look very very similar I'm going to use a little hot glue here and just shoot it right down that chimney and that's going to hold that all in place and this is how that sign is going to look so here is the final look of our four projects here's our hanging basket you can see where i added the um, the extra greenery to it and then over here is our beautiful wind chime We have a little bit of a breeze but it's very hot today very hot I believe in you I know that we all have a little bit of craftiness and creativity within us and I don't say that you should do everything like I do it do it however you like it make it your own that's what this We're channel gonna start is off with about. a seahorse wreath Dollar Tree has some amazing stuff right now. I'm going to use some nautical rope, both the little, the soft one and then the rough one that's brown. I'm going to use some of this meshy ribbon, some netting, some of these pieces of sea glass, a willow pick, and this gorgeous, salty and happy seahorse sign from Dollar Tree. And here is a placemat. It is like a wicker kind of placemat. I got it at Goodwill. We're going to start by removing the hanger on the seahorse, putting a piece of tape right over the back side, and then we're going to use a little bit of this spackling from Dollar Tree to just fill in that hole. Very simple, easy to do. Whatever's left, you can put right back in the little jar. All right, I, know I already know that I want this to be dimensional, so I'm going to use these little blocks, these building blocks from Dollar Tree, and I'm going to put these on the back. And this is going to allow us something to glue it down to, but still have some room so that we can tuck little goodies along the way as we decorate this beautiful wreath. So once we get the blocks down, we're going to put some glue on them and place it down on the mat. This is a square place mat, and I decided that the diamond shape would be exactly what would be fitting for this beautiful little salty and happy sign. So here's some options for you. You can just use the cotton type nautical rope if you wanted to or you could layer it with a little bit of this rougher it's more like jute rough rope around the outside or you could just use one or the other or a little idea is you could twist these together like I'm gonna do it's easy enough you're gonna take those little tape sections they are taped on the ends I'm gonna use clamps to help me hold it in place until my glue is dried and then I'm just going to begin twisting these ropes together. Trying to keep in mind as I'm twisting to make sure that the distance between them is equal, meaning that the size of the twist is about the same for every twist. That's easy to do, right? You can use clamps along the way to help you hold them down if you would like. Now I'm just gonna tighten it up a little bit 
and go ahead and glue this down on the corner bottom of the placemat. It's going to hold it in place here and then any place that it is going to be touching the mat, I just roll it up a little, add some glue, and then roll it right back down and hold it on there. I'm using Gorilla Glue for all of the projects today. I'm going to continue around in any place that it is going to be touching to add the glue. And then we're going to do the same thing into the corners. If you need clamps to help you hold things in place, go ahead and grab some clamps and you can definitely get metal or plastic clamps at Dollar Tree. And of course, uh, I use Dollar Tree items, but I'm not sponsored by Dollar Tree in any way. I just like to give you beautiful decor on a budget and going to Dollar Tree and getting thrift items is the way to do it. And it brings me joy to share these things with you. So I hope that it brings you some joy. Okay, once we're all the way back to the beginning starting place, I'm going to use some clear tape and I'm going to wrap it around my rope. I'm gonna do this to both of these because we need to trim them and I don't want them to fray. So doing it this way keeps them nice and tight on the ends. I'm just going to use my little cutters here to cut this off. You can certainly use scissors, but it's awful thick and I don't wanna ruin my scissors. I'm going to glue those two right back together. And yours may or may not look like this. Depends on the size of the placemat you use, obviously. But trim it down to where you need to trim it. I'm gonna do the same thing with this brown rope. I'm going to cut it and get it on both sides and then twist it around to the back. It's gonna overlap where the other two are joined. And I'm gonna use a good amount of hot glue here to hold this in place. You can clamp it until it is perfectly in place if you would like. Now, just to make sure that I have it on here snugly, I'm gonna you know, use the backside and I'm gonna take my little glue gun and go right around the jointing between the wood and the rope to make sure this doesn't go anywhere. So now I want to do a little something with the seahorse. Um, we're going to make this a girl seahorse. And it already came with the little, the little metal star here. So I'm going to add that back, but in a little bit different of a position. And then I'm going to layer it with one of these little starfish that comes in a three pack from Dollar Tree. And I think this is called the Shoreline, maybe. Um, it's that product line at Dollar Tree. They have got some beautiful things. I'm going to use this willow pick and cut it down. This comes in a variety of colors. So if you chose to use a different sign besides the seahorse, you can certainly get something to coordinate. I think there's a big variety um, at most stores right now. Love this meshy ribbon. I don't know what that stuff is, um, but wow, it really looks like coral. All right, now I always like to do a dry run. Y'all know this. I like to place things down before I glue them. I don't want to make them permanent until I'm sure. So I just kind of toy around with the placement. I was able to cut this pick into five pieces. And one piece I'm going to trim down and make into a shorter piece so that we have six pieces. I'm going to make some little ribbon bunches here. Or uh, mesh. I guess we could, we could probably just call this mesh, right? So I'm going to take this mesh, bundle it up about an inch from the bottom and I'm going to take some of my jute and tie it off. I'm going to use a double knot and this way it doesn't slip. And I'm just going to take sections of this mesh to make little, mm, maybe to kind of mimic seaweed or coral. You'll see in just a minute. So I'm going to measure off about 10 inches. I'm going to grab my ruler here for you. And it's about 10 inches, but you can do yours longer or shorter. If you get it too long though, it's going to kind of flop away and you don't want that to happen. You want it to stay close to your project that you're working on. I'm going to take another piece of that jute. And you know, if you're the kind of person like me who saves everything, this would be a great time to go into that stash where you've removed all those little uh, jute hangers from your Dollar Tree items in the past. Pull that pile out and use those on this project. How about that? That'll save you even more money. 
So I'm just going to continue to do this until I get four different segments. Once I get the knot in both little ends, I'm going to cut underneath and leave about, you know, an inch on the bottom of it and then trim down my jute so that I have doubled sections. So now I have the beige underneath and the white on top. You can layer any colors that you like. I think there is a white, a cream, a beige, brown, and green. Those are the ones I've found so far, but feel free in the comments to let me know if you found any other colors besides those. Help us all out. And of course, different stores have different, you know, supplies and, and different things, so it kind of varies. If you have the opportunity to go to more than one Dollar Tree, you might want to do that when you are hunting for your goodies to make your projects. Mmm, coffee. Okay, so there are our five pieces. And I think I want them to lay down here. So you can either start by gluing right down on your placemat. And if you're gonna use a regular, if you're looking for a placemat, you don't find one that's thrifted, you're going to need to buy one that is sturdy enough that you can hang it on the wall. Sturdy enough that you can glue things to it and it's not gonna flop around. So getting something like wicker or wood is a really good option. Something with some thickness, I guess you could say. So now I'm just going to either glue onto the, the placemat and then lay it down, or I'm gonna put a little bit on the pick and lay it down. You can do it either way. Be sure you protect your fingers if you're going to choose to do it this way, just to make sure that you don't hurt yourself. I don't want anybody having accidents when you're supposed to be enjoying the projects. Okay, so I like this so far. It looks good. It definitely looks like plant life in the ocean. So I'm just going to take my little wire cutters and trim these down. And now we have two smaller ones. I can make it even on both sides. You don't have to though. And you could certainly use more picks than just the ones, you know, just the one that I used. And you can use a bunch of different colors and really make it look tropical and gorgeous because we all know that the ocean life is beautiful and colorful. So now I'm going to start working with these little pieces of mesh. You can twist it like that to kind of give it that seaweed look if you wanted to. Or you can just kind of make it look wavy in there. And I know that I want to have mine open up like this, so I'm going to stretch it out just enough that I know I'll be able to show both the beige underneath or the cream underneath and the white on top. It's just going to give more dimension to our project instead of it just being something that's flat, like a sign. I really want this to be like a wreath. So I'm going to add a little bit of hot glue and I'm going to take a stick, just a little, um, you know, I get all kinds of stuff like this at Goodwill, so it's just a scrap of some sort and poke it in there. It's going to go under there because we raised it up off the placemat and now we have the little gaps that we can tuck things under, which really brings it more to life. I know crafters use the term dimension a lot, but it really does. It gives you shadows, it gives that extra interest, and it gives you more space to work in so that your otherwise flat project, flat projects can be lifted up. And I think it looks really nice. Hey, if you wanted to, you could even take some Dollar Tree string lights and go underneath the seahorse, and that would light it up. Wouldn't that be pretty? We're going to be working on some more lighted projects shortly though, so hang in there. All right, so I'm going to continue along and just tuck these back and forth where I want them, add hot glue where I want them, and so that they will stay in place. And I like the look that maybe he's kind of hiding in the coral. Maybe he's finding some protection in there. Seahorses are little, little guys, so, you know, we want to make sure that they feel safe in their home. All right, now I'm just gonna pull these down a little bit, kind of have them hanging off just a bit. I like the look of it. It's cute like that, I think. But you do it any way that you like. So I've got this little bag. Now, these little twisty things, uh, along with some other stuff, it's like a table scatter. And I believe it came originally from the at-home store. But I got it at Goodwill and put it all in a plastic bag. So I have these to use on all my projects. And these, quite nicely pull apart and they they're they're short and shrunk down and then you can pull them carefully and they kind of unwind a little bit this is really cool 
Now some other options for you to make little puffs of coral or little wispy pieces is to cut a couple of sections and then rather than dovetail them, you want to cut them in the opposite direction so that they're kind of rounded instead of having a little uh, like a V cut in it, you're going to round it out instead. Fold it in half, bunch it up, add some glue, protect your fingers of course, and then hold it in place. Give it just a minute to dry and then you can lift your finger up and it'll stay right there. All of these little extra pieces just give it more dimension. They give you something more to look at. They give your eye something else to wonder over. And I love that about crafting because we can make things our own. I'm going to continue to tuck around here and there. Now I've got the beige. Some pieces are going to be doubled. Some are going to be single. It's going to give us a nice variety. Recently, I got a comment from a, um, somebody who was watching that says I talk too much. So that's interesting. Um, and I do apologize if anybody thinks that I talk too much. I like to communicate with my viewers and subscribers and have had so many people say that they appreciate that about me. So I'm going to keep doing what I do here because I'm always going to try to stay true to myself but give you guys what you want. So continuing along, I've added an eyeball. There was two little circles. Um, this is the eyeball. There were two of these little marbles in that bag of sea glass which was awesome because I didn't know they would be there and it makes the perfect little eye. I just decided that maybe she needed a little something else up there on her head so we're gonna give a little I think that makes it perfect look at that there's a shell that used to be an ornament it's kind of iridescent I've added that and that little poof back there I think that looks pretty now I'm gonna take the sea glass that in the colors that I like which is the white and the kind of that seafoam green color and I'm gonna add those in there just kind of lay them around those little wicker balls which by the way came from Dollar Tree and I'm gonna glue these pieces in here and there and then I'm going to add in these little cone looking things look like cornucopias I don't want everything to be matchy matchy on both sides I want it to be kind of wild and random and just add those down you know this one's hanging over the edge a little bit and I like that and then I found just these were in somebody's Christmas uh, like Christmas ornaments they were um, these and a bunch of other little Christmas things I think at Goodwill and so I picked up all of these because I thought these are perfect for little bubbles don't they look good for bubbles I did a mermaid wreath and I used um, some little ornaments that were similar to this um, I will try to link that mermaid wreath it was from I believe last year maybe the year before it is really pretty and if you like this kind of beachy or you know ocean type of thing I think you'll really love that little wreath and they do look like bubbles to me again more dimension then you got the shininess from the little pearly bubbles and you know the pearls pearls are in the ocean right I think it's perfect for that but you do you do what you want you can also get the little table scatter that's like in silver and white and blue and white and you could use something like that on there and that would look nice I'm just continuing to look at this piece from all sides all directions and add in wherever I feel like I want to add something in I'm gonna add some more glass down here on the tail and just tuck those pieces around and one more little poof underneath the end and glue it down not bad not bad now we're gonna make a hanger this is very simple I've got about eight inches of jute here recycled jute I'm just gonna tie a knot pull the knot down tightly and then we have a hanger I'm gonna put it in the top tip and then use some of my glue I put the glue under it I'm going to add glue over it as well and then a little piece of scrap cardboard right on top and this is this beautiful little seahorse wreath oh she's gorgeous 
She's just stunning. Some of these in that same shoreline or shore, whatever, section at Dollar Tree. These beautiful little lanterns or jars. Continuing with the glue sticks, you're gonna need something like this if you're gluing on glass or you wanna switch over to something like um, fix all adhesive, super glue, E6000 to glue onto glass. I know that I wanna put these on. I tried the starfish, but I did, I mean the, uh, <laughs> the, the dollars, the sand dollars, but I really didn't like the dimension. So we went back to the starfish here and I'm gonna add some glue. The legs are, um, the center and the legs are at a different dimension. So the center is higher than the rest of it. I'm just gonna use the rope to glue onto the starfish tips where I can because I know I'm gonna get a better hold from rope to that little, I don't know if that's resin or what these are made out of, but they're not, they're not real. They're, um, I believe resin. And you can glue it down like that rather than gluing two shiny surfaces onto one another because they're probably gonna pop off. I mean, use a good glue, but mm, just to be on the safe side. I have this much rope left from that project. I'm just gonna fold it in half. I'm gonna cut it after I put some tape on it. Again, the tape is gonna keep you from having any frays and I don't want it to fray out. So I'm just going to wrap that all around the center. And this is gonna give me about two 12 inch pieces of rope after it is cut. And I'm gonna use my cutters again. Cut this any way that you wanna cut it, but I'm gonna cut it right in the center so that I get the same amount for both little pieces of rope. If you don't have tape, here's another option for you. Take your hot glue and your protected fingers, poke down in the fibers, and then just twist it in the direction that the rope is already twisted in. And this will kind of help lock that into place. So there are your options for that. I am going to glue this right down on top of the jute ring that is already around the neck of this bottle. You see here, it's right on top of that jute. Same thing here, I'm gonna twist that glue section around and then just press it straight down on the jute. These ropes are gonna cling nicely to each other. I'm gonna take some type of trim. This one that I chose came from Dollar Tree. It's beautiful. There are several different colors of this. They're really pretty. It's probably be a good time to stock up because there's a lot on that spool. I'm going to start on the bottom and then wrap around. Now, for one thing, I'm trying to cover up the connection between the rope and the jute. And also, I want to bring that beautiful striped coloring or design into this project. So I'm just gonna wrap it around and around. And I'm trying to do this in a way that it's not overlapping and I'm wasting my twine. I want it to stack one row on top of the other, but still be thick enough that I get a full coverage so that you don't see a bunch of gaps in there. There are some right now, but we're gonna fix that, not a problem. Nothing is glued yet, so we can very easily slide those pieces of twine together. So you're gonna see me do that now. Just take my fingernail and just push those together. And then I can continue up and wrap it further if I need to. And it'll sit nicely under the lip of that bottle, which is great because it makes gluing it down so much easier. You can just tuck that edge right under there. Now this is the back side of the bottle. We don't wanna have our starts and finishes on the front because we don't wanna see that, right? We want this to be high end. So we're gonna conceal it by putting it in the back. Although it does blend in fairly nicely because it's, it's very thin. So this is how it looks. We're gonna do the same thing to the other jar. And now we have two of them. So now you can embellish these any way you want. You can put sand in the bottom. You can add like these are just like some driftwood pieces. You can add driftwood in there. You could add some shells in there like I'm gonna do on the other jar. You could add table scatter if that's what you would like to do. You could fill these up with some more of that sea glass. That would be really pretty as well. You could also add a little light like that. So this is what it would look like just you know, basically, it's not stuffed full, but just to give you an idea of what it would look like when you put something in it. So I'm gonna take some of this thrifted mesh, a little hanging LED 
lantern or whatever you call it from Dollar Tree. I have some thrifted sea glass and starfish tinsel. I have two, two strands of that. I have this hanging basket from Dollar Tree and some satin blossom white chalk paint that we are going to put on there. Make sure when you buy these that it has the little clear tab in there so that your battery is not run down. All right, once it is painted and dried, only one coat because I'm not doing anything major with this. It's going to be covered for the most part. I'm going to remove the chains. I'm going to put them aside. I definitely could have done this without my chains, um, but I wanted to hang it to spray it, and this made it easier. So I'm going to save the chains for another project. I've used my pliers and taken off the hook. Now we're going to have to have something to hang it with, and we're going to use jute. You can use rope jute, the original chains. You can use some type of a garland. You can use whatever you would like. But I'm going to use three strands, all equal length. I'm going to tie a knot in the end. And while the knot is still loose, I'm going to take my hanger and loop it through. You can see that I have all my, my ends out. I'm going to loop it through and pull it tight. You can do a little extra securing with hot glue there if you want to, but I didn't feel the need to do that. This is going to be in. Then I'm going to close that joint there. Now we have our hanging mechanism. We'll be taking those little hooks that came off of the planter and replacing those one on each strand. Easy enough to do. Probably didn't have to show you this. The main thing you need to know is that you in order for it to hang nice and evenly, you're going to make sure that you tie these ropes at the same length. Now you can do that by just making a loose tie in it and then sliding it down to the right length so you get them all the same length. And start off with just a knot. You don't need a double knot. That way you can untie it and fix it if you need to. And then I'll have all of mine hanging at the same length. Perfect. And test them against each other and make sure you have the same amount there. And there we go. Now I use my pliers or my cutters and cut off the little extra wires around this center ring because they were snagging when I tried to wrap my mesh around it. So just cut those off and then take some masking tape or duct tape, whatever you want to use. The reason I use masking tape is because of the color. You're not going to be able to see um, a bunch of silver duct tape through my mesh. And you'll know what I mean when I start wrapping it, but I'm going to secure this so that it doesn't snag any of the mesh. And then I have cream colored mesh, which makes it perfect. Use whatever deco mesh you have. I don't recommend anything that's really like fabric or anything unless it's very sheer because you won't be able to see that light that you're going to put in it. The light is not very bright and I want mine to have just a really pretty glow. So I thought this mesh was perfect for that. Dollar Tree also has a lot of mesh. It didn't take a lot to wrap this. I just cut a section off of there. I didn't even measure it and I looked up with the right length. Tie this on around the center ring and then just begin to wrap this back and forth around your spokes. I tried to make sure, well I say spokes, but you know what I mean. This is not a tire but the little supports, I guess you would say. Trying to make sure that I had some over each one. That way it was evenly spaced and I didn't have a bunch of overlaps and then a bunch of spots that are sheer. You know, we want this to look high end again. So we're gonna keep doing that and wrapping over those sections till we get all the way around. And this was easy to do, but if those little pieces were still in the center of that ring, those metal pieces, that you would it would have been a mess it just really would have been a mess so you can just push this over those little um, areas where you hook it'll just go right over it and then around and look at that i had just enough and this will be the back i'm going to make it the back so i had some little frayed ends here it's not a big deal you can trim that off all those little pieces that are sticking out. I'm just going to trim that down and make it look nice and neat. Now, we'll make that the back of it and nobody will know. And this is what it's going to look like when you have it wrapped around with your nice mesh. I'm going to layer this with a piece of that 
um, nautical netting. I don't think I'm getting the word right, but you know what I mean. You get that at Dollar Tree as well. And I'm just going to cut a tiny section out, spread it out, and layer it over the top. You can skip this part if that's not your thing, but I like the layering. I like it. Kind of looks like a jellyfish, doesn't it? I'm trying to get these little grids um, evenly spaced so that I can add some hot glue and keep them from falling off. I don't want it to fall off. Trying to add just a little bit and then press it together with my fingers and then add onto sections like around the metal where I can. That way it has something to hold on to besides just the mesh. So that's what I'm doing, just tacking that down all over. Now to switch the angle up for you, I'm gonna show you what we're gonna do with this gorgeous tinsel. I'm looking at this first off to see how I want this to stretch out. And I think the best way to apply this is to make sure that there's a starfish on every one of those little cross sections. Because I'll be gluing that starfish straight down onto another piece of something solid like the metal. It's gonna help hold the mesh in place. You can see I'm holding it right on there. Give it a good little minute there to, to dry. And then I'm gonna pull it around and put the next one down. Glue it down on that metal. If you don't have a piece of garland that has all of these bigger sections and smaller sections, you don't even have to use this process. You can just wrap your garland around and glue it any way that you want. But I do recommend that you put it on metal. Look at this. Is this not the cutest little thing? Oh my gosh. Okay, so now we're gonna put the hanger back on. But first, we need to cover up this ugly white hanger. So I'm gonna take my jute, tie it around the knot from our little hanging sections here, and just slide it up. You tie this on however you want to. I'm just gonna trim that little tail off of there and then begin to wrap it around the entire hook. I'm gonna cover this whole thing up. Add a little bit of glue where you need it. Keep sliding it down and then just cover that whole thing up. See, even when I make an attempt to not talk, I feel like I should be talking. So let's fill in the space with a little happiness, right? So what's bringing you joy today? This craft is bringing me joy today. Look how easy that is. Little glue on the end, twist it, cut it off. Then any little extra little piece here, you can just see how I wrap it on there in the direction it's going in. That'll help seal off those little frays and then you can cut that little tip right off and you got the perfect hook. Besides, I love talking to you guys. I like, I like talking to you, I just do. All right, we're gonna add these back on. I'm gonna clip it, one to each section. And then, so that's easy to do making sure that it is where it needs to be. And I'm going to push that hook through the hole here. Because we're gonna flip it over and now this is the top of our light, right? So I know that I'm going to put this inside because it won't fit if you do it upside down and you try to push it through there, it won't fit that way. So we're gonna try something different. I'm going to sit it on top of a can. That way I can very easily fix this part I'm gonna make sure that my hanging pieces are exactly where they need to be because we're gonna be using glue and you can't move them after that. So I'm making sure they're in the right spot, making sure I have my light where I want it. I'm just gonna add some hot glue, dibble dabble here and there, and then press it down in the middle. Then I can turn, look how cute. Now, for the top, I left mine open for now, but you can make a flap with a piece of ribbon, whatever you want to use. Glue two sides down and then that way you can fold it open when you get ready to turn your light on and off. I'm just going to take the hairs off of this hook. I don't recommend you do this if you're afraid to do it. Um, you always need to, to use safety, of course, first. This is not for children. My videos are for grown-ups. Perfect. 
All right, now here is our overview of our little items. I staged them for you. First without the candles, and then in a moment I'll have the candles on. I've changed up my backdrop. I've changed some things in my craft room. I've gotten more organized, and it's making these processes so much easier. Here's our lantern. You saw the seahorse sign. My little Adirondack chair there I got from the thrift store. Here are candles if you like that look. Look at our lamp. Our little hanging light. Ugh, I believe in you and I know you can do this. I hope that this video has inspired you to create some things without having to spend a ton of money. Subscribe to this channel if you've enjoyed this video and if you like to save money but still creating works of art like this. Take pride in what you do. We all have craftiness within us. We just gotta believe in ourselves, right? Believe in ourselves and draw on that power. For project number one, we are going to be using this package of napkins and we are also gonna use the same package for all of these. I'm gonna use a couple of signs, a bank that I got from Dollar Tree. So it's the house sign, the one with the beads. I also have a, a um, summer sign that we'll be using after a while. We're gonna start with the little house and we're gonna just press down on this and it will pop right out. It is covered with a paper, so you wanna be sure that you clean that off of the back of your house. And scrape it off. And then, if you gently scrape, you can get the paper off without having to paint the bottom. So it's like there's a print on the top and like a papery backing. And I was able to save that so that I don't have to worry about painting and waiting for the paint to dry. But you can take yours completely off and just paint it with some white chalk paint, dry it, and it'll be perfect. So I scraped a little too hard here. I got a little spot, but I'm gonna show you how to fix that. Just take an acrylic paint marker or a paint pen, dot it on there, and then I'm gonna take a napkin and just blot it off. And that covers it up nicely. And the reason we wanna do that is because you'll be able to see through this one ply of napkin. We do separate these two ply napkins into one ply. We have less wrinkle in that way, so that's the way we're gonna do it. I'm gonna use a glue stick here and put this all the way on here a nice full coverage so that it will adhere down flat. You can use Mod Podge or something else if you would like, but you got to be really careful because the napkins are so fragile that they will tear. So just keep that in mind if you're going to use Mod Podge or like um, a school glue for this. I'm going to gently place it down where I want it and then pat it down. Again, this is really, really thin. I'm gonna use my little Mod Podge roller here and just make sure that I press out any wrinkles or bubbles that might be in there. Inevitably, there are going to be some projects where you just get some bubbles, lines, or wrinkles, and that's okay too. So you can pull your edges off like this, or you can just take a sanding block, I get mine at Dollar Tree, and just sand those down. And it gives it a nice, clean edge like it was painted on here. And that's the look, the look that I, I'm kinda going for. See, with that nice white backing, it makes those beautiful colors of this napkin really pop. And I chose the popsicles because of summer, but you can choose any, any napkins that you would like and apply that to any of these projects. I'm gonna use some hot glue and flip that down on the back, put it right back in its original place and press it down. You can paint the edge of the box if you would like you can embellish it with stickers or whatever you would like. I'm gonna make a little bow to go in the top. I just feel like it needs a little extra something up there. It's kind of cutesy, it's not the look for everybody, but like I've said before, I like to give you options and then you can do whatever you wanna do with yours. This is just for inspiration. So this is a little simple shoelace bow. I bump the camera. And then I'm just going to trim those tails down where they won't be in the way of our little popsicles. There's some really pretty summer napkins out right now. They have some that are fruit also, like watermelons and lemons, all kinds of pretty ones. 
but you can think further into the season for fall. You can use fall napkins for these projects and just change up your colors a little bit and that would be fine too. This is an easy way to take a dollar twenty-five package of napkins and make a lot of decor. We're going to get five pieces and then there's actually more that you could do with this. So I decided once looking at this from all angles like you know we do that I wanted to add something extra on the outside. So I could have painted it but I have this ribbon that fits almost perfectly. I had to just take a little bit off of the edge and then it was a perfect fit for the outside of this. And it almost looks like we painted it plaid. So whatever colors, if you like this, whatever colors that are going to coordinate with your napkin, you can use to put on the outside of your little house. Just going to use a little bit of glue here and put this ribbon down. I only glue it on the bottom when I started it and at the end. So I just kind of pull it tightly so that it won't slip around. Hold it in place and glue it down. And this would be easy to remove at another time if I wanted to use this box again for something. Another money saving tip. We're going to use this little fall sign and we're going to start by taking it apart. We're going to take the back off. Just use those little prongs to remove it. And then I'm going to take these beads off because I'm going to use something else. So you can pull them off with pliers or your hands. I start to try to get the paper off here with this little tool that I use all the time but then I realized it can pretty much be pulled off by hand but I couldn't get it all the way off so here's another option grab your chalk paint just go right over the top of it you don't want to be there all day long trying to peel it and then let it dry so I decided I want to paint the outside and I'm going to use some of this orange this pumpkin chalk paint using chalk paint because it dries fast but see there's orange in there and I think that will look cute so if you like a little more color in your summer decor and you don't want to leave everything just a wood finish you can use chalk paint on here I did use two coats I went on the inside and the outside as well as you're seeing so that it's nice and finished then I'm gonna take my napkin I'm gonna tear the edge so I can separate my plies I wanted to show y'all how to do that because it's really not that difficult and then see how I want to place it. Again with the glue stick, going to give it nice good coverage and then I'm going to find my placement and then press it down. I'm not rubbing it right there with my hand because I don't want anything to come off so just gently placing it and then I'm going to use the roller. If you make a mess up on this and you tear it when you're trying to clean it up or trying to press it down, while that glue stick is still wet, you can pull that off of there. I've done that before. So you can pull your edges off or again, you can use a little sanding block and go around the edges. That just really pops on that white. I love that. And then this orange looks really nice with it. Very summery, I think. Maybe this could go on a back porch if you have a pool party. It would be really cute. So I'm going to take a variety of beads. These are just thrifted, but you can get beads at Dollar Tree in all different colors. And I decided I wanted to make a little pattern with these plastic and wooden beads. The little teal or the uh, aqua beads here, those are actually plastic. But the other ones are wood. I'm going to slip it on this yellow and white twine, baker's twine that I got from Dollar Tree. And I'm going to, to tie a few knots. Now the type of knot you make is not important as long as it is a fat enough knot that your bead won't slide off of it just like that. And you can secure it with a little bit of glue if you would like. Now you don't need to see me do the whole thing but you see here I have a pattern. Blue, pink, and white. Once you get to the end and you have as many as you would like, tie it off. I'm going to add some hot glue right into this bead because it's a bigger diameter and I just know that knot's going to slip. And so here's my little strand of beads and I'm going to put my colorful beads back on this sign. You could also paint the beads you already have if you wanted to use those. I'm just going to put them aside for another project because I know I will be using those in another project on another day. So I'm going to use some hot glue. I'm just going to kind of put these back in a similar position to where they were in the first place. 
and then cut off the excess. And this is what that little sign will look like. You could even hang this off your back door heading out to your patio. That so I'm cute. going to take these napkins actually folded over, have a print on all four sides. So you get four pictures out of one napkin. So that's even better. I'm gonna lay these down here on this poster board. And I think I wanna cut these down a little bit more so I don't have a lot of excess to work with. And I know I don't want the words on the bottom. So I'm just gonna cut those off. It doesn't matter how neatly you cut these out because we're gonna be cutting them again shortly and you want enough to glue. So I'm gonna trim down what I don't need, put it aside and save it. I'm gonna move these down. I'm gonna trim off a little bit more that I'm not gonna need. And then I am going to put glue all over this piece of poster board. I wanna make these thicker. So we're almost gonna make them like appliques. I'm gonna put them down here onto our glue stick area and press them down and I also use my little drying tool to try to get them dried a little bit quicker. That purple goes away and turns clear, so no worries. I took the other ply from the napkins and I'm just gently patting and rubbing out any little rough areas on here because I don't want these to be wrinkled. These are going to be used and I want them to be pretty for the sign we're gonna use them on. So I'm gonna just trim it down to make it more manageable and I'm going to cut out the popsicles now. I have some little scissors here. They are my little Arteza scissors. And I like to use small scissors when working on these projects. So grab up your small scissors or go get your kids or your grandkids scissors when you're cutting little things like this because it makes it so much easier to go around those curves and circles and get those cut out. For now, I'm gonna leave those little popsicle sticks on there but I will be cutting them off. So if you wanna cut yours off, you can go ahead and do it at this point. You know, it's another one of those things when you get in a project and you're not sure exactly what direction you're going in, that's kind of how it was on this one. So I'm gonna use this sign from Dollar Tree, but you can use any rectangle sign. I wanna make it white without painting it. If you don't have paint, here's an option for you. Take that same poster board and just trim it off. I'm laying it on there to see how much I need. I'm using my rotary blade, cutting it off. Now I have the perfect covering for it. So you can use a glue stick, hot glue, tape, whatever you want to use to affix this down onto your poster board. I am just going to use the same glue stick. It is a jumbo glue stick. And it's going to work for all these projects for me. I guess you could Mod Podge it too if you wanted to. Or use school glue. I press it down really nicely. Do the same thing here. I'm rolling it out to make sure that there's no little spots in there that's not stuck down. I don't want any gaps or bubbles. I don't want it to fall apart. So you're gonna take like little wood embellishments. You're going to take sticker letters. You're going to use poster board stickers, whatever you wanna use. I'm gonna use these to spell out Sweet Summer. This is the same wording that was on the bottom of the napkin in the first place, but I decided I wanted to do it with wood. Okay, so now we're gonna take popsicle sticks and we're gonna give these popsicles a popsicle stick. Yep, I'm just gonna trim these down so I get them the right size. I'm cutting about mm, maybe a little over an inch off the end. Now is the time I'm going to curve out and cut off those popsicle sticks that are drawn on. I'm gonna take those off and after that's all done, we're going to just use a little hot glue and put them on a stick. Isn't that perfect? Yep. I think all of these coordinate nicely together. They all have that same theme. You can use the small ones on tiered trays. You can use this big one as a sign somewhere else. Really easy. This would be cute for party planning too. You know, get napkins and do your little party favors. If you want to see lots of inspirational, budget-friendly DIYs, be sure you subscribe to this channel. I would love to have you, and it is totally free to subscribe. All right, look at the little popsicles. They're so cute. Okay, so now I know I want to paint my letters. I'm going to take some of this wonderful paint here. This is a coordinating color. You can use whatever you want. See how it scoots around? 
I decided to use a dot of glue to hold my letters down and then look at this look how rough you can be and then it just peels off of there whenever you're done so I'm gonna paint all of my letters this color I am going to let them dry I'm gonna use my little drying tool my little heat gun and then I can just add sweet summer to the top like this or I decided how about you use a little bit of this beautiful polka dot ribbon I don't know why but polka dots just remind me of the summer it always has maybe it's the polka dot bikini song y'all know that song yeah maybe that's what it is so I'm just gonna take some of this Dollar Tree ribbon and I'm just gonna wrap it around the sign and then squish that glue into the ribbon so that it stays down just using a spatula here use whatever you like protect your fingers though because it's really hot and then I'm going to put my letters back down on here making sure they're spaced how I like them and while they're laying there I'm just gonna pick one up at a time so that I don't lose my placement and start tacking down those letters y'all I have merch now I do I'm so excited be sure you follow me on my social media okay now here we go finishing up sweet and this is almost done you can use a piece of scrapbook paper you don't have to use anything you can paint a stripe up there if you would like however you want to do it just a bunch of ideas for you this is all about inspiring you to make it your own there's no wrong in crafting y'all know that I say it all the time and it, it really is true if it brings you joy then it's perfect all right I am spacing out my popsicles to see how I want them on here and then after I get them where I like them I'm just going to use that ruler to keep my spacing right from the bottom so I don't have a crazy looking line if I don't use some type of a guide I have a tendency for my line to kind of go upward or downward but definitely it is not straight I'm just going to add it to the stick and press on the stick because I don't want to push down my popsicle I want to keep it having that little bit of elevation so just doing it on the stick and then you can see that I decided to do a little bit of dry brushing of some of this white chalk paint over the top of the blue just to make it look a little more I don't know I like the look of it a little more aged I guess pretty much in the summertime anything goes right look at that that's so cute this just is this is cutesy this is little girl cutesy to me see the dimension you can see how they're raised there a lot of dimension I like it depth and dimension as we like to say now we're just gonna put the sign that was on the side of the sign we're just going to put that on the top of the sign now going to use the same string and I'm just using the little scraps of popsicle sticks to hold them in place because I didn't have any paper and it works perfectly it's a cute little sign isn't it really cute we're gonna take this little bank and remove the backing I bought this a while back but I'm still seeing it in my store every time I go in it's just a piece of paper we're gonna take it off since the glass won't come out I'm trying to decide is it in the front or the back well it's on the inside the print is right there so I'm going to take my scraper here and gently gently scrape this away you can use Goo Gone you can use fingernail polish remover you can use whatever you would like but I didn't want any of that substance making a nasty mess on the sides of my little bank here so this was the best option I'm gonna use an alcohol wipe and just clean up the front and then on the inside I'm going to clean that up as well and those little black pieces go everywhere it's not vinyl it's something else like chipped fingernail polish and it's it took me a while to get it all out going back to that poster board scrap I'm gonna trace out the square so that we know we have exactly the right size to go on the inside so this is what it's gonna be trimmed all out and once we get our little square that's going to be perfect we're going to divide our napkins plies and see how it fits nicely on there 
pretty much all of the signs, um, any of the ones that you choose are going to fit. Maybe even the picture frames that are 4 by 4s maybe, I don't know, they may be too small. Don't quote me on that. Okay, so this time we're going to leave the word in there. I'm going to decide where I want it. I can pull slightly before I press it down. And then I'm going to roll it out. I know I've showed this in every one, but it's just very important to get a high-end look, to really think of those extra things that you can do to make it look like it's painted on there rather than a napkin glued to something. I mean, that's not what we're trying to achieve, right? We're not trying to let everybody in who sees our products or our designs go, oh, that's a napkin. Isn't that clever? Well, I don't anyway. I might tell somebody that, but I don't want them to just automatically know it. I want it to look like it's painted. And doesn't that look painted? I think so. All right, so I'm getting some double stick tape here. I found mine at Dollar Tree. You can get yours there. And I'm just going to tack down little pieces here and there in the corners. And that'll be enough to hold this to the backing of the bank. So again, finding the placement and then pressing it down. It's got a really good hold too. You don't want to be lifting it up afterwards. So get it right the first time, right? All right, gonna lock it back into place. And this is what it looks like. If you like it like this, you could certainly give it to your children, let them put some summer money in there. Maybe the ice cream truck comes, so they need a little, little extra money. They can put it in there. Or you can use it for a piece of decor, which is what I'm going to do. And just add in some beads that are the same color, maybe that you used in your other project. Put it in there. You could use beads. You could use little um, table scatter balls. You could use uh, little miniature erasers if you found them in fruit or popsicle type shapes. That would be really cute too. And now I've got a little shaker box. And it just gives it a little extra something, I think. It gives you an option. This would be cute on a tiered tray if you have a tall tiered tray. Now we're going to paint. Make you can put jar. it anywhere. So, I had this jar. I'm going to cut down my napkin. I don't want the sweet summer on there, and for the size of this jar, it just wouldn't fit. Now I'm going to trim it down, take off any excess that I don't need, because we're going to be working on a curved surface, surface, and you have a little bit different issues to work with. In order to make that background pop on that napkin, we're going to have to give it something white to be against. So I'm using my chalk paint here. I'm painting all over the jar. I'm going to dry it in between coats and give it two coats. Once it is dry, this is how it looks. And then I'm going to decide which side of the jar I want it on, and I'm gonna use the side that doesn't have any bumps on it. You can get jars at Dollar Tree that have a design if you would like, but I don't want that on my jar, not for this project. So I'm just gonna go down here, now that I've looked at it for sure, trim off anything extra that I don't wanna have to deal with. And then decide how I wanna place it. I'm gonna use some matte Mod Podge because I'm using chalk paint, paint which is matte. I'm gonna add some to the top and take my brush and just rub that all over. I love a flat brush. That's just my favorite, but you can use a sponge brush, anything you would like. I wouldn't rub this on for too long because I don't know if it, at some point that it could possibly lift your paint. I don't know, but I'm not taking chances. You know what I mean? I'm not gonna give myself more work than I have to. So I'm going to take this and place it down. Carefully. And you really got to be careful here because again this is Mod Podge now so this is making that napkin wet it will peel and tear so quickly you really got to be careful and I'm just going to pat it down where I like it I'm going to cut here because we're going around curves and you won't notice your edges on here once you're done I'm going to take the same brush that I was just using with the same paint that was already on there just to tap down my edges and then I can add some more, go over the edges here, and then after all the edges are down, I'm going to go ahead and go across the middle and all the way around the jar 
to lock this into place. I'm using my drying tool, my little heat gun here, to dry it. It really makes projects easier when you can make that paint and everything dry faster. I want to embellish my little popsicles here, so you can find these little sticker pads at Dollar Tree. Mine actually came from my daughter. She used this for her planning in college and she had some stuff left over, so I'm gonna take some of these motivational stickers here and I'm gonna put them down on my jar and I'm gonna put them one on each of the popsicles. So at first you'll see me just lay them on. I'm not really pushing them down because I wanna make sure it's, it's what I want and that I like them where they are. And then I can get them centered and right where I need them to be, the right height and everything. Rub those on well and then, I mean really push them down well. And then get your Mod Podge on your brush and go over your stickers. And this will lock this in to the same layer that your napkin is on. And everything will stay nice and tight and smooth and not peeling off. Now I've got some glitter ribbon because I thought what am I going to do to the jar ring? I don't like that non-lid look. So I'm going to cut some of this off. They have beautiful colors with the same glittery, there's, it's really thick. Um, and it has like a paper backing. It's a little too wide though for the jar lid ring, whatever. <laughs> so I'm gonna trim it down. We can modify things, can't we? I do this to ribbons all the time. So we can do it on stickers too. Make it what we need. Okay, so I'm gonna peel my backing off and then place it down on my jar so that the ends meet in the back. I don't want those ends meeting in the front of my jar. I don't wanna see that seam. So I'm just going to wrap it around there. You could use this jar as a bank. You could use this jar to put your paint brushes in, your pens. You could use it on your desk. You could put makeup brushes in it. You could do on a bucket list, you know. You could do a bucket list for this jar. Just be creative. What would you use a jar like this for? Here are our projects together. We got five projects out of just a few napkins. Isn't that crazy? I believe in you and I know you can do this. You can always find napkins. If not at the Dollar Tree, you can definitely find them in other places. Dollar General has nice things. You know, get some stuff on clearance after the season. Put them back for the next year if you got space. Really save your money but make some really cute seasonal pieces. For project for number one, we have a tiered tray topper. I have this looks like a pedestal for maybe a sign. This butterfly, it's like a resin butterfly wall hanger thingy. And then I have some embroidery hoops, two sunflowers, and a garland here. Just a little section of garland. And my Waverly wax and a wet wipe. I'm going to start by taking all of this apart. Now the only thing that wasn't thrifted in this project was my Waverly Antiquing Wax. Everything else came from Goodwill. So I'm gonna take the hoops off, just gonna use the inner rings, and first we're gonna give them some color. They're fine as they are. If you don't wanna color them, you don't have to. If you'd rather paint them, you can do that too. But I am just going to add some on the wet wipe so we get a light, nice stain, and go all the way around the inside, the outside, and the edges of this ring. See the difference in the color? It's subtle, but it matters. So I'll do the other ring too, set them aside to let them dry, and now I'm going to do the butterfly. This white color just, or lack of color, just doesn't have any dimension to it. So by adding some of this wax, we're going to get some shadowing down in the lower sections of the details of this butterfly. And I want all of these to match, so I'm gonna use the same wet wipe and go over the high spots on this little pedestal. I'm going to wipe it on and then I'm going to be wiping it back off. This is going to, instead of looking like it's dirty, it's just going to give it more of an aged look and I like that. It changes that bright white to a little bit of a creamier color as well. 
and it fits into my rustic decor perfectly. And that's the idea when we get thrifts, right? Is to be able to find something that appeals to us and then make it our own. So we're gonna do the same thing here. Don't wanna wipe on the inside, just wipe over the top and look how it just settles in the cracks. All right, so we're gonna set that aside to dry and we're gonna attach these two hoops together. Just gonna add a little hot glue and attach them to what will be the top of the topper to give it some more security and to give us some more space to put our butterfly later. I'm gonna use some jute and wrap it around where we have them fixed together. Go around and around and around. You can use ribbon for this, um, or if you use some type of a super glue, you might not have to use this at all. I'm gonna add some hot glue, just press that rope down into it, that jute, and then I'll trim off what I don't need. Protect your fingers here. And then I'm gonna just clamp it. I love you guys. I hope you know I love you to the moon and back. Enjoy your coffee break. Okay, so once the butterfly is dry, I'm just gonna get an idea of where I want him to be on there. And I'm going to move on to putting this ring down on the pedestal. So we have a back and a front, it appears, on this pedestal. And I want this to go to the back because when I put my florals on, that little metal piece will be there for me to attach some things to. So I'm using my screw to press a hole in this wood, just a little dent here, to give me an idea of where I want it to be centered. I'm gonna add some of my Gorilla Hot Glue to hold it in place. It's gonna make it easier when I drill the screw in. Be very careful, use a slow speed because you will split this wood if you are not very, very careful. You can use a little finishing nail or something there if you want to. So I've cut this apart into little pieces, makes it a little more manageable. I've cut the stems off of the back of my flowers and I've kept one of the leaves. Now's the fun part, when you get to just play around and arrange. So now I can put one of those pieces right there on that little metal piece on the top to help hold it in place and secure a piece down to the pedestal. I think this is silver dollar eucalyptus. I think that's what that's called. And then I'm gonna start placing my flowers in to make sure they stay where they need to stay. I'm gonna add a leaf in here just so that I have some of that foliage that originally came with those flowers. And then push them in here and there until I get them as full as I like. You can use a little bit of glue to fix it, to keep things from shifting around too much if you want to. And then my glue gun was sticking to this piece. I left it in here to show you its craziness. It kept sticking and pulling away, sticking and pulling away. So once I got it straightened out, I decided to go ahead and add the other sunflower on the base instead of up there on the edge. I'm gonna add a little bit more greenery just to kind of, you know, extend it out a little bit. Move it around where I got the glue on the frame. And then just go ahead and cover up the back over here, the hardware, nobody has to see that. Then I'm just gonna push the backing out a little bit so that it will fit, the butterfly will fit up there over the frame. Don't worry, I'm gonna flip it here for you. And I'm going to flood it with glue. Make sure that that butterfly doesn't go anywhere. Like I mentioned before, um, there's Gorilla Glue in my glue gun right now. So I'm just going to put a lot of it on there and on that jute section too. And then I'm gonna use some clamps to hold it in place and it's going to dry like that. I'm checking to make sure it's cool and that's been several minutes so you don't stick your finger in hot glue. Once it's cool, I am going to move on to the next part. I'm gonna cut seven inch pieces of this beautiful thrifted ribbon that I just very recently picked up love this and i'm going to cut three pieces i'm going to crisscross and put one right in the middle we're going to make a simple little embellishment or bow if you want to call it that although there are no loops you could still call it a bow i think i'm going to take a little of my jute cord and i'm going to put it around the middle flip it over on the table and then give it a few knots This is going to hold everything tightly in place. And if your ribbons flip over on, you just push them back down. 
you can dovetail your ends if you like and then decide where you want to put that bow. I decided that I like it here on the bottom. So since my cord is still there, my jute cord, I'm just gonna twist it around, poke it through the flowers, around the back of the pedestal, and tie it down. And this is how it's gonna look. Now this one is one we already had in the house. It belonged to my mother-in-law and it um, has seen better days. I think it was used for potty training probably for the kids, um, lots of grandbabies. So I'm going to give it a new life because I think that it is precious that she had it. And I think we can fix it up. So after it's clean, I'm gonna have some Mod Podge, I'm gonna have my fabric here. I'm also gonna have some white chalk paint, which you will see in a moment. You can see the color underneath here. So I'm just gonna trim off what I need and then I am going to paint it with this plaster chalk paint, just on the top. This is gonna make that fabric pop. You see the difference there? It really makes it pop. So I've already put my layer of Mod Podge down and I'm pressing this down with my hands and then I'm going to roll it with my Mod Podge roller. I'm gonna go all around the edges really well then I'm gonna go back over it with the Mod Podge and lay a good coat down all over the edges, all over the top and all around. But I'm not going to do the sides of the top. We're gonna to have that taken off. You see here how I did it? It's gonna take a little while to dry, but leave it in until it's completely dry. You can even wait till the next day. And I'm gonna take a sanding sponge with a coarse grit and I am going to start shearing off the fabric we don't need. If you get enough of your Mod Podge on here, this will make the edges almost like paper. So it's a lot easier for that to come off. If you don't have sandpaper, you can always take your scissors or something like that and just trim it off. So I'm gonna do this around all of my edges. And look how pretty this is, so cute. I'm just gonna go back around and make sure there's no little frays here on the sides. It comes off easily with the sander. And then to distress this, I'm gonna take a really heavy um, sandpaper that goes with my hand sander, but it's raining so I can't do it. So I'm just gonna use it by hand and I'm just going to take nicks and chunks of paint off. I'm just gonna go down to the wood surface underneath. There's actually like a, a cream color, there's a um, white and then the wood on the bottom. I'm gonna go around there all the way around the edges that would normally get wear. And then using a dry cloth for this, I'm gonna take some of that wax, rub it in, and just lay it on thick. I'm gonna put a good coat in there. I'm gonna focus on all those scratches and just push it down into the wood areas. If it bothers you that the bottom is not, you know, on your projects is not finished, you can go ahead and do that. But for this video, I didn't feel the need. And this is gonna be used on my porch as a plant stand anyway. All right, so look at there. My husband, my sweet husband brought me some breakfast. Continue around and then wipe off the excess. We're gonna start with any type of a little candelabra, candle stand, candle stick, whatever you wanna call it, candle holder. And then two of these little, I guess they're like a hard plastic chargers. Mine were all thrifted, all of that was thrifted. So be sure that your objects are clean and because my trays were very rustic looking. I'm going to make sure that I use that same effect on the piece that's going to be holding those pieces together. So I'm gonna give it a, a good dusting with my dry brush. Once I get it the way I like it, it's practically already dry. I'm going to use some super glue. Mine is the Fix All from Dollar Tree. You can use whatever type you have and a little bit of hot glue. That's gonna give you quick hold and long-term hold. I'm gonna get above it, look at the center. Then I'm going to go ahead and get ready to put down the next one. So easy, put that this aside. This is what all these projects were inspired by, the beautiful fabric. I'm going to use this piece of thrifted wood, this piece of scrap from my husband. I have some thrifted and some store-bought trim. We're not gonna Mod Podge this one. I'm gonna give you another option if you don't have Mod Podge. So we're gonna wrap this like a present. Wrap it over, make sure you have enough to go all the way around. Then you're going to hot glue, just a little, little edge under there. 
fold it over, make sure that your edges are nice and straight, and ideally it would end somewhere near the bottom so you don't notice it. And then pull that down and glue it on. Simple enough, right? Now this is how you're gonna fold your ends to make them nice and neat. This is how we fold packages in our family. I don't know, not everybody does this, but this is how we have always done it. And it works with fabric too, so why not? All right, so I know that I'm gonna have that folded over, so I'm gonna add a little hot glue there and just press that little angle right into it. You see, I'm gonna press it down and then push that little angle over into it. So now it looks like a little flap, like an envelope flap. I'm gonna put glue all over that little flap there, except on the very edge. And I'm just gonna roll my fingers over so that it pushes it down and then I'll go right under the edge and press it out. So simple. Okay, so now I'm going to take my joyful sign, and this is just a wall cling from Dollar Tree. And I am going to put it down in the middle of that sign. You can use any type of sticker, you can use your Cricut, whatever you wanna use, just to give it some embellishment. But y'all know joy is my favorite word. I cut the end off of joyful too, had the little leaves on it, and I put that on the end of the joy. I think it looks good. And now this beautiful thrifted piece, I am going to use as the base to put our sign on. I'm using hot glue. You can use whatever type of glue you would like to use. You could even screw the bottom in if you want to do that. But I'm going to press it down until it dries. And then you can flip it over on its sign to do some embellishment. So I'm just going to use a little bit of trim here to go around the edge. And I've just chosen the one that I thrifted. It's a braided, uh, like a braided jute, a braided rope and I'm just going to make sure that I have enough that it meets in the back so I don't have any intersections on the front and pull it and press it down. I'm trying to make a straight line down the center so no glue is gushing out. We want it to look high end so we don't want all that extra glue all over the place. When I get to the end I'm going to press it down and then trim off the excess. Push it back down in that glue and I'm going to use a Dollar Tree sticker here just to embellish it and it looks almost exactly like the fabric from Dollar Tree. That's a cutie, isn't it? Yes. So I am going to start by making a little embellishment or another bow, if you will. I'm going to be cutting this ribbon into two pieces and then I'm going to cut a bunch of those trims and some Dollar Tree ribbon into two pieces and I'm just gonna make X's and crisscross them over each other. Just like this easy enough. You can cut your pieces shorter. You can um, dovetail them. You can cut them at angles, whatever you want to do. I'm going to grab that stack, flip it over, and then tie it in the back. Now you'll see my ribbon flip over, but watch how easy it is to fix it. Don't get frustrated if that happens. Just push it back down and then tighten your, see there? Push it down and then tighten it back up. No problem. And then you're going to fluff it out. And, you know, at this point, too, you could also trim it. I'm also going to be looking at the center, which I'm using a sticker from that pack. Same one, that other little, the other little sticker that we had. See there? Nice. All right, now to start with the flower. This lid is going to be the center. And I chose these two yellow colors because they match the fabric. We're also going to use white and a couple of different paint brushes. So I'm going to start off by using white to put on this candle holder. This is like a tin, like a metal candle holder. I'm going to go, uh, almost looks like a tart pan, doesn't it? We'll go all the way around here. You want to be sure you do this because the pan is really dark and you want your yellows to show up nice and bright when you make your flower. So I'm going to start off with the lightest yellow that I have here. And I am just going to color what will be the petals of our flower. So all around these little pinched or grooved pieces pleated, tucked, whatever you want to call it, all the way around there. And you don't have to worry about doing this neatly. It's going to be all over the bottom, but we're going to cover that up. Then I'm going to start with my next color. And right before you get to the yellow, I'm going to dip in and drag the brush up. And when you do that, it almost gives it an ombre type effect, a feathery type effect, which matches or simulates the same effect on the inside of the sunflower. Doesn't have to be perfect. Once it is dry, 
this center is going to be glued onto it. Be sure you got all the wax off your candle holders because they will not stick if they have wax on them. So clean them up really well. Put a good chunk of glue on there, put it in the middle, and I'm just kind of eyeballing it, and then I'm going to press it down. Now you can embellish the center if you'd like. This is just a, um, a window cling. You could use a glue stick to put that on there if you wanted. You could use your Cricut if you wanted to do that. You could use any stickers you want, but I'm going to leave the center plain. I'm going to use a curtain ring, take the screw out of it, and I'm going to get some more of this beautiful ribbon. It's so rustic looking to me. I just love it. I'm going to pull it through the center, and we're going to use this to make a hanger. A little glue to attach the two on the bottom, and then we'll flip that flower over and glue it on the back. You could leave it like this if you wanted to, but I think I want to add my pretty little bow. Look how cute that's going to look right there on the top. So I'm going to put it right over the ribbon that's already there. And fluff that little bow. You know how we do on this channel. We fluff it. And that's how it is going to look. Here it is, all fixed up and staged for you. Never mind the clip on the back. I just used that to hold it in space. I believe in you. I hope that you believe in yourself. We're all crafty and you can definitely do these. We got all of these lovely projects out of things that were either forgotten, disposed of, you know, not wanted anymore. And with a little imagination, we were able to take the things and turn them into something that we love and it brings us joy in our home. If you find joy in making home decor and doing it on a budget, then I would love for you to subscribe. Thank you so to much for stopping by, and I'll see you again soon. Bye.